Hello, hello. Welcome to the first episode of the Branding Cry podcast. And alongside me, I have my good, good, good longtime friend, Demar Lewis. What's going on? Glad to have him beside me on this journey. And I guess we'll start with some some introductions. Okay. Um, I guess just why we decided to do this, like personally, like each on our own, and then I guess why we decided to kind of come together and do this. Yep. So, um, you wanna you wanna start it off? Uh, sure. Yeah, I uh, I I pretty much wanted to start this off um, because I just finished my uh, program in school for broadcasting and uh, I thought this was a good start to really try and you know get my voice and uh, my face out there and discuss stuff that I like talking about all right and for me um obviously I didn't have a lot of subscribers you know that I had my previous YouTube channel the cry chronicles yep so I've been kind of interested in dabbling in this area for like a long time and I've obviously wanted to kind of progress in this area for a long time obviously stuff came up in my life i obviously you me record us recording this now i haven't even dropped the video on my youtube channel yet but it was basically just the intro video of or just a video me kind of explaining why i kind of stopped uploading as much and doing as much content yep and basically just life updates obviously you know i started acting yep <clears throat> so like I'm doing, I'm doing that and I'm trying to work on that. And that was like a big, a big gap that I, or a big thing that kind of, I started focusing a lot of my attention to. And then on top of that, you also know that I've had two kids ever since, like I really started posting a lot. So obviously I'm a father of two now and that has taken a lot of time. So now that I'm finally in my own space, right, we got, the, you know what I mean? Studio set up, we don't have to move everything. You could just come in, hop and click and we go. Um, I, I, I feel like I'm finally ready to get back at, into that part and that passion part that I was really excited about back then. And yeah, I think that's, that's probably it. That's probably the biggest reasons why I, I wanted to, I, I'm, I'm obviously starting this. This is obviously like a new form from just making YouTube videos, uh, an audio form, but yeah, it's, it's still just the same, same thing. Just being in front of a camera, obviously nicer mic and just discussing things that we're passionate about and that we really enjoy talking about. So yeah, that's, those are some introductions. Again, Brandon Cria, we're, we're co-hosts Brandon Cria, Demar Lewis, and I guess, should we just, should we just get into it? Absolutely. Should we just get into it? Yeah. That's how you started. Um... So, big first topic, obviously, obviously, I, I want to mention also some topics that we're obviously going to discuss just For generally sure. on the pod. So, hip hop, just music stuff that like music subjects that like we're really knowledgeable about or we're into movies, TV shows, um, culture news, uh, ball talks. We're big both... Uh, ball enthusiast you know what i mean basketball enthusiasts we we love the game yeah pa really passionate about the game i think i think i think the best word for that would probably be like fanatics fanatics yeah, yeah in a way like we're yeah like we're like die hard too yeah. in a way like we we you know what i mean like we live and breathe nba basketball we love that um but just that would I, I would honestly say i feel the same about all those other topics too that we probably live and die a lot of those all those other topics so like exactly i'm excited to get into to these topics with you obviously the topics that we have today are good ones and just obviously the topics involving this stuff going forward so without further ado now that that's out the way just a little, a little house cleaning yep we got um the fir first up we got the kendrick album 
So we're right. gonna start in, in in hip hop, and this would have by the time we're recording this, it'd probably be just going over two weeks actually. So this since is, it came out, yeah. So it came out last Friday. So this would be the week after. This would be the Sunday after it came out. So we've had oh, so it's like a week and like two days, two days yeah. right? Okay, so a little over a week. Have you listened to it a lot? Yeah, it's it's definitely surpassed ten listens. I would say. Yeah, you probably listen to more more than me still. Um, did you want to start it from the heart part five and in leading into the album? Yes, we'll we'll start with that. So go ahead. Okay, so what when the heart part five came out, it was a Sunday, so it was the Sunday leading up to the album. So that would have that would have been just the beginning of May, and um, it happened on a Sunday. So that's about th- so that's probably three Sundays three Sundays ago or two. Okay. Yeah. So. When I first got that, I was at work, and uh, as soon as I saw the notification, I knew it was coming because that's what Kendrick does every before every album he releases a heart a heart song from the series. And um, as soon as I saw him post that, I sent it to the group chat immediately. And then before the time you guys even had to react, everybody probably was already going listening to it. And my first initial thought was, um, I'm expecting. That's the thing. I don't with Kendrick. You don't know really what to expect, right? So. I was hoping for something more like the heart part four where it's more intense. The beats like grimy and it's deep and it's dark. And, but no, this one was a little bit more um, uplifting. He sampled uh, Marvin Gaye's uh, I want you from, uh, I believe it's 1972 from when that album came out. Mm. And um, I like that. I like that. That's music department. Yeah. Right? That's, <laughs> I, that's, that's so. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, <laughs> I like, see, see yeah. this, this is my but, music department. I like that said, history yeah, knowledge. Exactly. Hard see, sample to clear too. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And uh, sampled that song. And, and you know, from the first listen, I was like, okay, lyrically great. Um, instrumental wise, it took me a bit to get into it, but the the, the I, I um, what I took away from it was that the lyrics and the uh, the the lyrical pen was still there, and um, that he has yeah that he they didn't re- he didn't really miss a step. No, then I'm like, oh, okay, he's still you know, like he's still good, still go, still good to go. And um, what really got me into the song and what really got me addicted to it was the music video. Because I really liked the the, the visuals that with the song, amazing it made video. the song way 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 better, and that's the thing. That's the thing that's uh music with music videos nowadays. It, it really lacks substance of what the message they're trying to put across in a music video. So that's one thing I appreciate with Kendrick with with this is that the music video really really enhanced that song for me. And seeing the visuals of what and and the doing the different faces of people who are all going through different kinds of struggles and. Uh, Basically, just trying to show you know these guys are real people too that that face struggles of of, of regular day people as well, and uh, it, it was very powerful. And I think I've watched that video at least maybe twenty times because it was it was really uplifting to me. Yeah, so I, I really enjoyed the video. So when when you first sent the song and I went to listen to it, I was like thought the same thing as you. This guy hasn't missed a step. Too like. Just what a ge- what a fucking genius, right? And just like what a like honestly like a true artist this guy actually is. And then even like, I know you were saying that when you first heard it, you were having a hard time kind of like, I guess like just like rocking with the song as a whole. Not you know what I mean? Just not like, like rocking with the song like as a whole. Just you know, just uh, trying to really. It's hard. Like I think just fully dissect what it everything. You know what I mean? And that's the yeah. thing with Kendrick. It's like, I feel like with every something, when Kendrick drops something, you just, you always have to feel like you have to dissect into something. And I think that's just me overthinking or me just being overexcited because I haven't got anything from him and this guy in over five years. Right. So, yeah. So I, I, when you, when you first sent it, I murdered that song. Really? Like when I say like 30, <laughs> like, like, like a lot of times, like that song, like not only the met, like you said, the message hit me, but even just, him musically like i liked the marvin gay sample mm-hmm. i liked just even the pockets that he found because again i know like d- did you did you watch the the, the joe budden like um, kind of review, review of it yeah, like, yeah yeah so like ish wasn't like you know ish wasn't feeling it too yeah, much yeah. and he was like he wasn't saying how like his lyrics he was saying that his lyrics and like the beat didn't really kind of pair and that's how he was having like when i was just like nah i'm like rappers just like good rappers fine like different pockets even like your your boy oh drake oh. <laughs> he finds different pockets like yeah, all sure, the time sure. you know yeah. what i mean so it's like he found a pocket in that which i was i found was a beautiful marvin Gaye yeah, sample yeah. that they made into a beat like i really really love that beat mm-hmm. i thought the message was good the ver obviously his, his verses were good one two i feel like two might have been my favorite verse mm-hmm even the, but even obviously the Nipsey verse at the end too was really, 
really good. And yeah, like I like like Joe Bun and them were saying too, like I feel like if anyone else were to try and get that off, it, they they probably they, could they shrink. And that's the thing, it's like what I noticed now with with the Heart series. So when the next Kendrick album comes out and he drops something, I feel like it's um what that song st- stands for is kind of the vibe of the album. Kind of. You know what I mean? If you go back to um the Heart Part 4 and how intense that was and then you go listen to Damn Dan was pretty intense lyrically and there had a hot, a lot of jumpy like trap based beats that Kendrick was on and this one was more a little bit more monotone a little bit more relaxing and even the message that he was trying to state in the heart part 5 relates so much more to what um Mr. Moran and the, Ste- and the big steppers is. You see where I'm kind of going? Yeah. I so you. I think that's kind of like a little trend maybe but um anything else you wanted to add on that? No, like I think I think that's it. I last thing I just want to say I I really enjoyed the song. And Same. really enjoyed the video also. Like it, it, yeah. it was a good lead up to Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. For sure. Um, final um, thing I wanted to say about it also, just a little fun fact. So the, um, the music video with him doing all the faces and stuff, um, South Park creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone um, were, were a big part in doing that. I think he has some movie with them coming up. And I think that was like their first project together, even to see if something was working out to when they get into that movie. I haven't looked too deep into it, but I just know Paramount and uh, uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone are behind that as well. So okay. very interesting. It's cool. Yeah. All right. So next up, we got the, we're going to dive into the, to the big kahuna, the thing that everybody's been waiting for around the world. The thing that the entire hip hop culture Stopped and paused for five long years. Five. After hearing this and here's a message, how long do you think we'll it's gonna be until we get another project? I don't think another five. Um, I would probably say two, two and a half max. I turned thirty this year. Mm-hmm. You are two 30, years 20. younger than me. Yeah. 28 in August. I won't even be surprised if I'm like approaching 40. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, like with, so that's, and that's what I wanted to get into, just the general message of like what he was kind of putting down. So wanted to get, let's just get into, I guess what we, I guess what we both just generally thought of the album. So go ahead. Overall, um, can I go based off first listen? Should I can I start with that? So you can start with that. Okay, so when I when I got the album, obviously um, I was on my way back from downtown and I uh, was waiting and um, I got it finally. It was there. I, did, I it wasn't on actual Kendrick's mu- Apple Music page. I had to like type in the album name and go look for it, all that stuff because it was dig just up, dropping. Dig up, do all that kind of stuff. But I found it. Asked you guys if you did, and uh, you didn't have it until a little bit later. And um, my first set, my first. Um, Thoughts going into it, I was like, okay, just listen and get through it. And then find your, find yourself after and find out what you feel after. And um, I must say, after the first listen, I was... Like, I messaged you even the next day and I was like, listen, I don't even know how I feel about this album. But at that moment, we knew we were going to be recording this. So I didn't want to give you my full opinion. But when I did first listen to it and when it was done, I was like, I know this is a good album. I was like, I, after one of my first listen, I was like, I know this is good. But I think for me, it's like how good is it really and um after i i have to say after two weeks i i, I must say it, it, it's a it's a really 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 solid album um it's, it's a lot it, it, i think this is kendrick's most op- like this is the most open kendrick has been with his life um lyrically so that i wouldn't say it's his best lyrical album the lyrics are there though 100 percent. yeah for but sure. um i wouldn't say it's, it's it's as lyrically stellar as his previous work but it's still very very good from front to back and um i must say it was a it was it was hard i think some songs were a little hard to di- to uh, digest at first but uh as you go through it like for example even we cry together was extremely hard to digest like for me i felt when i listened to we cry it the first time i listened to it i thought i was like literally watching them argue like i felt like i was there and i was like he push you in there he yeah i was like Hold, i'm like what is going on that's a good artist though we put you you know what I mean? exactly that's a, that's and, then, and that's the thing it's like even the the fu's back and forth back and forth i was like okay is this gonna stop soon <laughs> because i understand i understand what they were trying to do but um that that really stood out for me as i was listening because it really really felt like i was there watching a couple argue back and forth and i think that's what they were trying to do 
and uh, they were really good with that. And there was a lot of and, and the songs that I knew I liked at first really stood out at first. Yeah, so I share similar sentiments with the with you on my first listen. Mm -hmm. When I just remember like going through it, and it was it was smooth like going through it. There wasn't you know what I mean any skips or like anything. It was smooth, but I just remember getting getting through it and just getting to the end and being like, huh. Same. And I guess, huh, meaning just I didn't really know what to think about it. And it was like it's like you said, like you knew you knew it was I good. knew it was a good album, but I guess I didn't know. I I guess I. And like I feel like I mentioned it to you in like I'm in, in like a text or something, but I guess I didn't really understand what he was laying down with this album. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's where I was, I was just like needing more time to kind of digest it. So I was just kind of there, like, huh. And yeah, like like you, so like mentioning just we cry together. Like I I, I know you said like a lot of people I've been hearing are saying i guess they they weren't the biggest fans of that song or if there is a skip they're skipping that which i could understand and i can understand that too but i was actually mentioning to you that i actually like when kendrick gets in that bag like it reminds me of you That's on a to pimple butterfly yeah. like when you just hear the actual liquor bottle kind of clinking together as he's like clugging back and stuff right, right. and just like that him like putting you in that room with, with him. him and making it feel like he's like you're, like you're there, like, like you're, you're yeah. yeah, like you're literally like a fly on the wall watching him go through that or watching them go through that, and so that's why like I really like when 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 he gets gets in that bag, um, and just like a a, a thing about that song in particular, like I really I, I like I I was hearing that he like that the girl on that song is an actress. Yes, she is. So like that's really interesting because like honestly to tell you the truth like I don't know if a rapper like a like a female rapper or a female female artist could have actually emoted the emotion that she was actually portraying on that song because she actually went off like she mm -hmm. I probably like thought she did a better job than Kendrick just like remember that you know that part kind of closer to the end where she's like where she's really crackling about... and it's really her voice is like really kind of dragging yeah, yeah. I was like nah like that's that's like and you know what's even crazy more crazy about that song is that. The, first, the the second time through, I'm like, whoa, these guys are actually rhyming the arguments. Like, you know what I mean? The fact where the first time I didn't even sound like they were rhyming, but when you actually yeah, take in yeah. what they're saying word for word, and like they're still rhyming at the same time, which is which is definitely um something new and definitely something unique. Um, do you have any standout tracks right now? So I kind of wanted to just go over the album more and then okay. kind of get into I uh, guess individual individual tracks and standout tracks. Um so that was off of first listen. Okay, so let's now off of now that we've digested. You said you've listened to it like ten times. I'm probably yeah. approaching that. So what 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 do you now think of the album? What I guess like what what do you think like the narrative of the album? What do you think he was trying to put down? Like like what what do you, what do you think now that now that you've digested everything? Well, what definitely Kendrick was trying to get around is that uh, he is not your savior for one. Um, I think he was trying to basically, basically, I think this is like his, his Jay-Z 444 kind of, in yeah. a way. It's more like yeah. just him letting you guys know that he's human just like you. He goes through things like every, every other human goes through. And, um, I think, you know, this album is definitely him being more vulnerable than ever. And I think that's what he was trying to explain that, you know, listen, I'm a human too. And, you know, my lyrics can't save you, but I can just let you guys know that I'm a real person too. And I'm human as well. And even as much as, as great as he is lyrically, it just shows like basically he's just a regular guy. And um, that's where I took from it um, with listening to it for two weeks. I must say, um, you could tell he's, he's, he's still very passionate about um, of rhyming. And I, I, I'm looking forward to see what he has upcoming in the, in the future. Because I think with Kendrick, I think with this particular album, it just still shows you that he's still very talented in you know giving you an album and that's the thing this is supposed to be a two a two disc album right so doing this kind of thing and having the same it wasn't and that's the thing with double disc albums usually they try to have two different things two different sides right this is still the like even from disc two it's the same kind of flow same same type of message same type of type of um you know uh theme 
See, so so that's where I guess I disagree with you in a sense. In regards of what? In with regards to the second half being kind of the same theme. So like I took a lot from this album. Mm. And I guess the So obviously he was trying to portray a lot from yeah. this. One of the biggest things that I took away, I think, was I, I, I guess one of his biggest overarching visions are and more I guess more from the artistic side was the idea of duality mm-hmm. and opposing things, opposing characteristics, opposing viewpoints, just op- basically opposites, right? And you could see it in in like you know, you know obviously we're Kendrick fans, you know that he does everything intentionally. Right. Right. So when I look at the layout of the album and i see the nine songs nine songs reflections they're both like almost like about 38 minutes or something like that like they're they're like honestly really close in time okay. right the last song literally is called mirror right yeah. reflection but when i say duality and i say opposites if you notice right it's called mr morale and the big steppers Worldwide Steppers is on the first half, which is Mr. Morale. Mm -hmm. And the song Mr. Morale is on the Big Steppers side. Okay. On the track list, which I think he did intentionally. You know what I mean? Just all these little things to just show dualities and, and, and reflections. You know what I mean? And so I feel like that was like his big kind of just like artistic kind of theme for the album. And again, the reason why I say I disagree with you is because in in father time which is a standout track i'll go more deep into that when we get into the track when we break down the tracks but when he threw out the kanye and drake bar yeah and i messaged you being like yo was that a shot and you were just like no like i think he's just trying to say like like he hasn't grown yet like from my competitive nature i wouldn't have just Hot. Yeah. I wouldn't have just got buddy buddy with him again you know what i mean like i would have been like it would have been a ting mm-hmm. so me hearing that, like I feel like what I see is like the first half being, and again, it calling it, it's it's like Mr. Morale is the first half, but the first half is showing his like immature his 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 side that hasn't yet grown when he states in father time mm-hmm. with the daddy issues in we cry together, mm-hmm. right? Just showing just right, and then in the second half, it's more the introspective. I'm choosing me. I'm, you know what I mean? Just like the kind of, just like the deeper messages, like, like, like auntie diaries, just showing how like he grew and just like, yeah. and again, like I'm, I'm going to break that down more when we get into like trackers. Cause I know we both have auntie diaries is like up there, yeah, up there track. So we'll get more into that also. But that's where like, I kind of see the, the, the differences in the two sides and and then on on a so that's like the big overarching theme that I see. And then on a personal level, I feel like Kendrick took the like th- this was Kendrick's album for himself. Like he was like, I'm being selfish on this. Not only am I not being your savior, and I can't be. Not not saying that I don't care about y'all, but in a sense, I'm saying that because I'm making this album for me mm-hmm. to get my shit off. To this is my space for me to deal with what I need to deal with, and. I feel like in this album, he was able to kind of take a bit of each of his albums and put it in and kind of package it. Like you get a bit of good kid, mad city with like the storytelling. Yeah. You get some pimp a butterfly with some of like the hard political stuff that he starts to get off in the song. But then you also get some of that damn feel when you get like that blast song yeah. die hard. I would say uh, N95 too. Yeah. Like, so you get some of that, that damn in there also. So I feel like he did, he did a good job with that on this and some i guess some of the other main themes that i was taking from this album was yeah i can't be your savior and i hope us as the fans are okay with that I, i'm okay with i'm that. okay with that too because you've given me plenty of amazing music and obviously us you know what i mean i know we may not look like 
we're that old, but you know what I mean? We're getting up there in age and obviously we're learning and, and, and just realizing what's, what's actually important in life and just taking care of your health and your, and your, your own mentals and stuff. So can't even blame the guy. And what are the, what are the themes? There, there was the, the can't be your savior. There was the, I'm being selfish. I'm choosing, I'm choosing this album for me. And then like, like him using the space to kind of get off personal traumas and personal things as in the daddy issues the auntie the auntie stuff the wife stuff the therapy the therapy stuff so it's like there was a lot of like him like you like you said him being vulnerable and again that was a selfish decision to be like i'm using this platform to deal with my stuff as opposed to giving you guys music that That you really want or what you're looking for right now and again like he said I choose me. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. blatantly telling, telling us like he's choosing himself. Right. So yeah. And like, I, 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 so again, like I, I know that was like a long, like a long winded, you know, a rant on what I was thinking, but there no, was a, there was a good. lot that I, um, that I took from the album. Yeah. Definitely dissected it. Well, those, and those were some those were some of the big themes and even just another another theme that I was getting from the album was like a kind of like lower end one was just him observing society oh I got that one too right and yeah. him just kind of being like this is what I see from y'all dumb motherfucker this is what I see from my eyes and I'm gonna tell y'all you know what I mean and even in we cry together where they may be some like personal piece from his to that like maybe he's he's been in type of relationships like that mm-hmm. but he also s- like blatantly states in the beginning of the song this is how i see you you guys like mm-hmm. he, this is how i see y'all and then it goes into the the instrumental of we cry together like yeah. he literally says it right before the song starts that like this is how i see y'all and i'm just like yeah he's using this album to basically again another selfish means and it's like it's his album so it's like why wouldn't he be selfish with it I'm using this album and this platform to tell y'all that I think you guys are like this, mm-hmm. right? So that's another theme that I think was part of the album. So there was a bunch of different layers, right? Kind of scattered, like like those last few themes that I mentioned, kind of scattered throughout track list, throughout the song, throughout the album. And again, like I mentioned, I feel like the overarching message and his big, his, his bigger artistic message is, was to, was the idea of duality right and like he even mentions it what's that what's that song duality spirituality good and bad health i know haunt you. i know you know this and to pimple butterfly you yeah, know what yeah. i mean like oh um, that's um that's mom the verse you know that's universe mama, that, you know mama, what i mean yeah, yeah. That, i thought i was thinking of the song from this album i was like no no, no i'm talking about to pimple that's, butterfly that's, that's mama that's mama right so like He's been thinking about that idea of duality and op you know what i mean and obviously kendrick is just always on that deeper level of kind of thinking so yep those are my, uh, th- those are like my, my big, big, big thoughts on the album. And again, like your takeaway. Yeah. My big takeaways. And again, like I, I, uh, me having all this time to dissect it and really being able to get out my thoughts, especially us discussing it now. Yeah. This album is really good. And especially maybe where I am in my life and things that I've experienced, like it, it really has sat, sat with me. Yeah. Um, if I were to rank it. Oh man. That's tough. If you want, to, you want to do a ranking quick. Yeah, let's do it. Because um, I don't. What know. do you got? What do you got? Well, do you want me to do album from, or do you want me to have where I place it? Like you want me to do like rank them from where I, what I have them. Yeah, yeah. I um. If you can, if you can't, I, I don't I think, think I, can, I might honestly, have my right order. now. I don't think I can. But what I will say is that I don't think I have it over Good Kid, Bad City. I don't. I don't think I have it over. To pimp up, I don't think. No, sorry, I might have it to over to pimp up. I might, and I might not have it over damn. So, like I was telling you, to pimp a butterfly to me, like I was for some reason, like it, it, when I re listened to it leading up into this album, it was amazing. It's amazing, but it, I guess I didn't love it personally as much as a good kid. And I guess even like Joe Bun was saying that, like he people, didn't really yeah. pe- pe- and people didn't really love that album and like i guess i like i guess i get it now that i'm a little older and i'm a little further removed from that album i guess i i do get that 
but I also get what he was trying to do with that album. Like he literally had a bunch of black people on the president of United States lawn. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he says it in black of the berry literally. So it's like, I, I get what he was trying to do with that album is me and me being older now having two kids, obviously me being hopefully wiser than I was when to pimp a butterfly came out. Like I, I get it. But for some reason, the album musically and just as a whole didn't, hit as as well as i thought it did or it didn't hold up as much it, it holds up but not as like high in the books as i had it mm-hmm. right so to me good kid mad city is still my number one i yeah. think like that album is so good it is. honestly it's like it's such a good album like he 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 honestly murdered that i honestly think i might have this number two really? to tell you the truth over i honestly damn? over damn because listening to damn again but i think it goes damn and then to pimple butterfly Okay. Yeah. Damn to me. Again, like we were discussing, is was like his commercial album. That's the one that has his, 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 his biggest hits on you there. You could tell just like sonically it was more commercially oriented. Yep. And the few tracks that stick out on that album to me, like Fear feel duckworth like those tracks are like like fear is to me is one of kendrick's best songs and even feel too yeah. fear and feel are to me are one of kendrick's best songs but the out like the rest of the album to me doesn't hold up as much as the other albums okay i can give you that i and i think um with this album especially after we just got damn in 2017 right five years i think it's hard because when I got Damn, I was like, okay, is this character taking the next step to being a little bit more commercial and being more trying to get those hits and but also giving his message at the same time? And with this album, you obviously see that. No, that's not the case. I'm still going to give you what I want to give you at the end of the day. And um, you could tell with Damn, like, I didn't expect it. When I first heard Damn, I didn't expect the the amount of hits that it had. I did not expect it to fly like that because that has at least five or six, five or six um, hits off there alone. And that's the thing when you get an album like that, that's a people. That's where people usually go. Oh, you know, this guy's taking the, you know, the, what's it called, the commercial route, and he's gonna not make any, you know, albums like how he was before. But no, like he's still doing that as well. So I think with that alone, that and and just goes go back to your point. I might even you know change my mind and put that at number two now because even after Damn, I thought this album was gonna be something like that and it wasn't. So. You know what I mean? I, it might switch down the line. I, with Kendrick's discogra- discography, it can change any at any moment for me. So you thought you would have got... I didn't think I was going to get this. I didn't think I was going to get something like this. And that's so funny to me because like... Because I'm like... Like, th- and like that's like, that's crazy to me for you, to, especially, you know what I mean? You, you being as like knowledgeable on music as you are, mm-hmm. that's crazy to me that you'd think that you would get another kind of commercial... Something, yeah, I don't it know. It being his last album, leaving the label, leaving too. the label, you know what I mean? Like, huh? that's where it's just like, I, and like, you're right, where I never thought that I would it would be this because, mm-hmm. like, I said, first listen, I was like, huh, because it was saying. a lot, it was, it was a lot to have to, to, to have to digest, right? On the especially on the first listen, but I for sure didn't think that, especially after these, like, the, the long hiatus, him always saying, yo, I'm in, I'm in Argentina. Riding a bike, no phone. Yep. You know what I mean? Literally, in one of the songs on the album, talking about, you know, my phone's broke, but, you know what I mean? I'm trying to keep the balance. Yep. You know what I mean? So, him watching the world, COVID popping off, like, I for sure thought it would have been deeper than Damn, but obviously nowhere near this. So, uh, fun fact here. Um... The first week numbers came out for for uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, obviously. Yep. So <clears throat> now that it being Sunday, so the numbers actually for that are two hundred and ninety five thousand five hundred. Okay, that, which is not which is good, which is good. That's but, it, eh? Right, and you want to know what Damn did? So Damn did did three hundred fifty three thousand first week. So that that alone tells me a few things. Well, one. Um, that's interesting. I noticed when Damn came out, I seen a lot more people playing it and tracked it more. Like even just DNA, like that song alone, it was the it was the, that time the NBA. It was around the NBA playoffs. That was the main theme song for it. Yeah. The like I it like hit that like I was saying the hits on there are really really good. Humble DNA, um, loyalty, um, 
the, the list goes on. Uh, that's what I think that one just had like had really had his more um, attracting the fans kind of uh, feel, like appeal to it and and to, not even to, just it, appeal, but I guess just how they were marketing it, even how he was coming out to the fan base because at the time, right? Because soon after that, it was announced that he was making the Black Panther album. Right. You know what I mean? So there was a lot of just like Kendrick. I mm-hmm. remember Kendrick, Kendrick, Kendrick around that time. Mm-hmm. Even the Rihanna feature itself will get you like, that's the thing. Like even features like that will, will, will get your streams up. And the song is good. Like the song is great too. And that's one of the other singles from the album. And just what, and, but what's like you said, it like you say all the time, like we'll be like, yo, Drake did this, Drake does this. But obviously for Kendrick and his discography, these streams don't mean that this is necessarily the better album obviously but i just think with that compared to what this has first week it tells you what kind of album attracts more people and and damn is the one that obviously did that the most for him in his career so far that's still crazy to me it is it is it is and after five years you would think people would be like buzzing i'm not gonna lie that Crazy, that man. has me a little thrown off. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm I'm really surprised at that. Like, I can't even... I can't even begin to believe that it actually was under Dam. So, I can't even begin to, like, mm-hmm. add commentary on it. Because, like, you know what I mean, right? No, I'm, I like, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm really shocked. Like, I thought you might have been, like, 550. I honestly thought you were going to give me, like, a, a monstrous number. You thought, like, Mr. Morales was going to do 550? I thought you were about to give me a monstrous number. So, here's the, here's the thing. I thought... I thought Mr. Morale and the Big Six was just off the time fans have waited alone. I th- I was saying 400 yes. to 450. Yes. So when I see 295, still great first week numbers. Like the only rappers that are touching that are Drake, um, Lil Durk, all Cole. those. Are, Cole. Cole will do that. Um, there's not, like I said, if you're doing that number first week, you're good. Yeah, you for sure. It. But I, like I said, after the five year wait, um, the build up to it and just the oh it's coming out this week but it's not coming or he hasn't announced any or the, even the announcement even saying um you know what he was doing didn't have a phone see y'all soon enough blah 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 <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah there's, there's, no there's no build up there's no build up even yeah, as I'm saying there was there was no like again like you said and even Dam had all these these hits and singles that were out mm-hmm. you know what I mean this was literally like yo albums coming next week yeah. still. Like, <laughs> here's the hard part here, five. yeah like, here's the hard here, here's the lead up here's a local taste and then it's coming next week like. and that's the thing it's like and that's and that goes back to you what you were saying about the album he, clearly he doesn't care what he was doing he, <laughs> no. Kendrick, Kendrick knows he can go in the studio today make an album just as good as this and give you just as much hit much hits as what he did with damn yeah. and knows he can probably give you these kind of numbers but like you said it goes back to what the album what the, album the general me- yeah and just like him being like I don't care yeah and like I'm yeah I'm exactly. doing this for me yeah. And the the num by based off the number wise, I'm not looking too deep into it. Obviously, the album's still great, but I but, but you and I obviously as a uh, as as rap as rap fans and obviously people who are watching this who are rap fans as well will understand that as well. And it just goes to show you how how numbers do mean don't really mean too much, but it, it does mean something at the end of the day. But in this case that we're talking about with Kendrick, it it really doesn't really matter any about anything for that number wise. Yeah, no, for sure. All right, so you want to get into standout tracks, and then we'll get into some. I guess, I guess, close out the album, and then we'll get into some other music talks. Absolutely. Um, I can. I want to. I want to pull up the track list here, just to make sure I have all the names right and everything like that. Because you know, even when I'm locked into the album, I don't even look at the the track list. The, especially the first two listens, I didn't even really yeah. look at the track um, the track listing in, unless the song really stood out to me. So, um, uh, Father Time stands out to me. Rich Spirit is great. Didn't like it at first. By the third or fourth lesson, I'm like, this song is crazy. Um, we Cry Together. Purple Hearts, I love. I'm a big Summer Walker fan. When I get into my art. We Cry Together is in like your top five, you would say? Or that's just a standout for Performance-wise, I would say. Okay. Performance-wise. I, I guess I'm with I'm you. Not pull, I'm, I'm not pulling up. Pulling up. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, bitch. No, fuck you, nigga. Fuck you, bitch. No, fuck you, nigga. I'm not pulling up. <laughs> and you're just like... Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, <laughs> the beat is knocking. <laughs> the beat is knocking. Uh, Al- the Alchemist did a great job of uh, producing that song. But I hear you on it being a standout. Like it. Oh, it definitely. Like, is, like I said, like it was really a like the first time I'm listening to. I really thought I was there. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, Purple Hearts, like I said, I love Summer Walker. Ghostface Killers, um, verse was great. Obviously, on a song like this, you, Yo, you're not. 
ghost face on feet. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, like, and I, like, I, I, clicked in that it was Ghostface like early yeah but yo like I actually love him on features like I yeah. love him on the gorgeous oh from, uh, from, from my uh, beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Fantasy like when he comes on he's like unexpected like, you just yeah. come out of nowhere like he murders them like he even he, on um oh my god um that song on Cruel Summer oh um, yes New God Flow even yes, that because yes, yes. you know what's so funny about that song before going back to that the original version he wasn't on it but when we got the album version he was on it so I remember when we were first listening to that you're like yo was that Ghost? so even then so even that goes yeah. back so it's always good to have Ghostface coming up on, a, yeah. on an album this too Silent Hill for sure Savior is Savior's probably my favorite on the whole album I can't lie probably like my favorite favorite song on there which song say that again, sorry? Savior with Baby Keem. Actually. That's my that's probably my favorite. Baby Baby Keem and Sam do. Um I'm trying to remember how that one goes again. That's the one where he's at the intro where he's like, um, um, where he's like, uh, Future gave you a money counter, but he's not your savior. Oh yes. That yeah, one, yeah, yeah. 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 Um yeah. Honestly, from Savior to Mirror is like all like literally. It's pretty flames, yeah. yeah. It's 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 good. Even him on Count Me Out at the beginning with the the chorus in the back and I do like that, that too. Was I was just too. listening to that. But I think the only song that I think the only song on this too that I that I'm like it's not skippable, but it's whatever to me is Crown. But Crown is not bad either. It's a good song. Yeah, like that's the only one that doesn't really stand out. And the Savior interlude. But um, what about yourself? So to me, like you said, standouts is We Cry Together. But if I were to just do like a quick maybe like top five, mm-hmm. um. I actually like N95 as much as it's a single. Yeah. Purple Hearts. Yeah. With Ghostface, because Ghostface. <laughs> um, and I, I really like that 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 track. Like, yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah, baby. That, that, that's, a, that's a track. And obviously, Mother I Sober and Auntie Diaries, both, both amazing. Yo, when I first heard Mother I Sober... Honestly, I was like, "Wow, yeah!" yeah. And it, it, like, it's funny. So, so okay. So, let's talk about. Let's talk about. So, we both obviously we both have Father Time, Auntie Diaries, yeah. Mother I Sober, yeah, in our tops. Yep. Right. So, let's just let's. I guess let's talk about those briefly. So, so you, you were just talking about Mother I Sober. So. I'll kind of piggyback off you when, yeah, like when I listened to that, to that song, but on the first listen, it was weird. Cause I don't know if it was maybe coming to the end of the album and I was maybe kind of not, not tuned out a bit because I just heard Auntie Diaries. It's right before. And I, and I, that song like really kicks you it, it, like, it, how can it not kind of mm-hmm. kick your brain into jumpstart? But I guess because like the, the instrumental in Mother I Sober is really kind of low and slow and kind of you know what i mean right kind of dull a little bit i guess it was kind of just really calming my mind so i guess i really wasn't taking in what he was putting down so especially like that third verse like joe bun was saying like that third verse was like probably one of the best verses that he's that he's heard in like a decade and like it's funny that he said that because it wasn't until like halfway through the third verse that something in my brain like clicked in and I was like aware of it. And I was like, yo, this guy's talking right now. Mm -hmm. Like he's talking, talking right now. Like, so that, that, that's a really standout track. Cause again, that verse like alone is just like amazing. Auntie Diaries. What do you think of Auntie Diaries? Love the, um, the uplifting beat like here's the thing what caught me off guard before i really understood what he was really talking well obviously you know what he's talking about as soon as he gets right into it but the uplifting beat the the bass in it was great um his reflection of how you know him and his friends would make fun like you know make fun of call and call people you know what i mean like call people the f word based off uh, off of off of what they're seeing on the road and doing whatever as him in his childhood growing up and um reflecting on back of how how, how the, um, his family treated it you know his um aunt at the time 
and obviously now, um, even even saying that he she was the first person to write a rap, and then you say that's get him that's into music, life, and that's what I'm saying. That's what my life had changed, and, and and that she was the first one to, to give him a fade at the barber was, shop, and that my fade was nice. Mm-hmm. People were telling me my fade was nice, and yeah, it was because of that same person. Exactly, and even um, there's a part even where I can't remember, I can't exactly pinpoint the lyrics exactly, but he was basically explaining there was like a little fallout when he was um, not a fallout, but there was just like a time period where he was in his career and he, they didn't speak as much. And that part too is just like, and, and he always like basically saying in the back of his mind that, you know, he always still remembers like everything basically that was going on between him and his aunt. And um, it, it's just, it's really, ni- it's really nice to know. Like, cause as fans, we don't know Kendrick's family. We don't know anything that goes on in his yeah. life like that. So anytime Kendrick um speaks on something personal like that, it, it's amazing. I don't have anybody in my family who's, you know, um, transgender or, you know, yeah, coming out of the closet like that so i can't fully really relate to it but you have a better understanding especially how the ltb um lgbtq is right now so obviously that's a great standout track for him i think it was about time if he did have something to, to say about it it was on a track like this yeah and and even just like him going and like again that idea that i was mentioning to you about duality and him going from being like a kid that didn't understand it to coming around and then by the time he came around to like when his cousin changed as well exactly he was more accepting of it by that point because obviously he he was wiser and older but because he already he kind of already went through it and like that duality point i keep hammering in because there was a there was a line that i i think i was listening it listening to it today and it kind of stuck out where he was talking about the pat be how 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 like past the line that pastors say about love thy neighbor you know what I mean? So he's like, but then at the same time, like you're saying that's not wrong. Like that's not right what mm-hmm. they're doing and you're, and you're judging them and you're doing that. Right. So he, he, like he literally like in the song was like, it's a choice between religion and humanity. And once he chose humanity over religion, he was like him and his cousin got way closer. Right. So it's just like, yeah, there was a lot of layers to that song also, just like the rest of the album. So obviously that was a big standout. Yep. And I don't know if you have anything else to say about Auntie Diaries. That's probably all. That's probably Nothing all in that particular, but when I obviously through my first listen, that was one of the standout tracks to me. Because yeah. I, I like Kendrick when he gets into that. I, I love any artist when they get personal and, and, you know, reveal things that, you know, that that were obviously kept a secret or not ready to reveal at the moment. But stuff like that, I always, I always love about um rappers or entertainers. Right? Yeah. It's great. So funny thing that that meme thread that you sent about this song. Oh, with the Drake one, with the yo that particular Drake one killed me. Really? It was like it was like when 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 he asked you to grab the mic and rap and, and, and I, yo the that <laughs> yo I could yo, never crazy. yo I'm looking around like anyone else <laughs> yo, yo, yo nah that meme was that that first one had me dying yeah because I just I just I don't know why, because remember when we went to the, I think it was the J. Cole concert, and he asked the guy to, to, to rap, rap something, and he knew nothing? Nothing. But I was just thinking about him pointing, to, if I was somehow that, if I was that close, and him being, yo. I'd be like, my auntie is a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yo, if you get an opportunity to spit from Kendrick, you gotta do it, man. Yo, I'd be like, I grab the bike, my auntie is a man. <laughs> His name is Marianne now. <laughs> Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's good, man. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, um, so last one, I guess that that's it for Auntie Diaries, really, that I have to say. Yeah. Uh, so last one, the other last standout that we were both, we both mentioned was Father Time. Right. And that's probably my favorite. That's my number one. I said that to you from Listen One. Yep. I even, on the Fantano review, he said that one really stuck out to him a lot. And obviously being transparent with our with our audience Obviously, the reason why that stuck out with me is, you know, like my dad's not in my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Never really been around. You, on the other hand, you have like a good relationship with your dad. Yeah. Right. So I could understand where that song may not hit with you. You could definitely understand it because everyone everyone will have issues with their parents to some level. Mm. But yeah, like obviously my situation had like, you know what I mean? Like, again, it's not the same as like like the abusive dad that he had or just like how he was moving, just like that tough love about like get up and whatever. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously I have my own 
stuff around him not being in my life that I've had to go through and work through. So obviously that song stuck out to me like a lot. And it was just, yeah, like even just like the emphasis that he put for some reason, you know what I mean? Like for some reason, like his, you know, his voice on that yeah, song was just like, it, it sounded like he was really, like, really like into it. And like, it was raw and it was like, like, it was just like, you could tell it was, it, it really was coming from just like trauma that is just from a child, like childhood trauma. And like, there's something about that deep, deep, deep trauma that comes from when you're a kid that is just, that just takes a long time to like get heal over and get over. You know what I mean? And you could really just feel it in that song and like, especially in his voice. Yep. Right. And there's just, there was like four lines that really stuck out to me like the most, just like when he mentions like, he's like daddy issues. I wear that on my forehead. You know what I mean? And like, certain times like i feel like i may be like that but obviously like i over the years i've really tried to make sure that i've tried to work on that um not the showing part just by me personally like whatever issues that i've had um and even but even just like the him using it, him using it in a positive way which i think i've also done myself which is when him him mentioning that Again, he's like daddy issues. That that shit's kept kept me competitive. That's mm. a fact, nigga. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I definitely feel like I relate to that. And then even just like when he gets closer to the end of the song and him mentioning just like, you know what I mean? When 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 your what does he say? When when your heart's made of stone and your mind's made of gold, and your tongue's made of sword. Yep. A little bit of like you you lose a little bit of your soul. You know what I mean? Just like certain things like that was just really sticking out and then obviously coming to the end when he was just talking about to all my niggas with daddy issues who made it through and just figured it out and kept pushing through and just like obviously again that hitting me like i mentioned i have two two kids now two boys you know what i mean so it's just like kind of like that cycle me trying to like obviously break with a previous generation so like that that song again really stuck out to me a lot and again not even and even if i feel like if i were to remove my personal stuff from it that song just hit as a rap song instrumentally and you yep. just felt it you Sam, know I mean? Sampa sounds great on that song by the way it's great to hear him again thank you for reminding me yep yo i'm a sample man you know yo he's <laughs> he's he's good i really like him and you know it's hey. funny for some reason that man loves to hop on tracks about parents yeah because you have you because you, have you listened to three hour drive alicia keys yeah Literally, like, I was watching this thing on Netflix where he was talking about how, like, that song's about, like, his mom just passing away and, like, him on a three-hour drive just thinking. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I'm just like, yo, this man loves to hop on, on parent de- tracks, you know? Definitely songs with um with rappers who want to go through personal things. Well, even he's on um, Too Much with Drake. He I is, know, yes. And that's yeah. one of Drake's personal, most personal songs, too, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Always good to hear Sanfa. Yeah, I don't know if you had anything. I know I, know I got kind of deep on that father time. No, for, no, you're good on that father time uh, breakdown. But I don't know if, if obviously you said it was a it was a it was a standout to you too. So I don't know if you want to instrumentally, even the lyrically, obviously with obviously with the lyrics as well. Um, it was great. Like I said, it doesn't. It obviously it it's relatable to me as well, but not as emotional as it was for than other tracks. Or it didn't it didn't make me feel as emotional. As we cry together, anti diaries are mother eyes sober. Still yeah. a great, still a great song. Yeah, still a okay. great, great song. All right. Oh, can we talk about how great uh, Worldwide Severs is lyrically? <laughs> the song? Yeah, it sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. That song is actually crazy. How, how, how does that one? That's the. That, I was listening to that one today, actually. That's the one where he's um, getting into. Uh, he just like that to me is just basically. Him getting revenge on all on all the older older white girls. Yes. Oh, crazy. She's a killer. He's a killer. He's a killer. Yeah. That song is actually. That song actually might be up there for one of my one of my favorites. Actually, I'm not gonna lie. For sure. And um, what did you think about the Kodak back? Kodak, sorry, Kodak Black being all over the album. Okay, so I'm glad you brought this up. So. I didn't even really take in he was all over the album until you pointed it out. Mm-hmm. And I guess obviously like I'm not the, like I don't really listen to his music that much. You know me, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm, you know, I'm, you know you're, me. I'm in very my, selective, very selective on my old nigga shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like very, very, very selective. So that's why I wanted to ask you actually more what you thought about it. Let me, I'll get off what I have to say, but I, I want to know more what you have to say. Mm-hmm. And again, what I took from it was 
that same thing and I keep hammering it in the duality him basically being like you guys are looking at him some type of ways but there's a lot of similarities of me in him literally but yeah you know what I mean mm-hmm. and he was using that obviously as a general bigger message but yeah but I I, I really feel like that like that's that's what he was trying to like that's the biggest thing that he's trying to get off with that but he was also trying to just help someone out i guess that he saw similarities in oh and that's the thing i like a lot of rappers actually do that even um even with j cole even j cole a lot mentions stuff like that like he mentions other past um rappers and stuff like that 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 the city about like i think even on a lot he mentions that he's seen the or i can't remember what song it is but he said um i think it's um Middle child, where he's like, just left the just left the young nigga Kodak reminded me of niggas from the Ville, like, yeah, you know what I mean, like even just replace like there's yeah. a lot of rappers like that older older rappers that you know appreciate those younger rappers and even with with this one right here, um Kodak was fre- like I think Kendrick literally took Kendrick to the studio straight as he got out of jail, and uh because literally right after a few days after Kodak was tweeting it's like you you guys will never guess who I'm in the studio with I'm with one of the greater greatest rappers ever. And I just want to know what the actual sit down conversation was like as Kodak Black's walking in and being like, yo, like, I want you all over my album. I want you to narrate it. I want you to do this. I want you to have, like, give you a song. And it's like the same thing you were saying with duality. It's, it, it's great to have, you know, people look at Kodak the way they do. And obviously he was fresh out of jail for um, an alleged, you know, sexual assault case that was dismissed um, later on. And just having like it goes back to the whole album, the heart part five, just basically showing like, yo, like we're all in the same like, you know, what I mean, every everybody who's a celebrity or you know goes to the same issues as regular people and him taking kodak black as an example i think is 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 a great uh you know thing to do as a rapper and just to show the rap community you know that he's just human as well and it was great to have him on i i I thought the i thought silent hill his i think he flowed like floated better on silent hill than than kendrick kendrick sounded great but i think kodak just from what i know and how i know his music is i thought he sounded great on that song it was perfect for him Okay. All right, yo. All right. Um yeah, did you I wanted to I guess ask you around that also is has there been any like I guess controversy because what I've been hearing is there's certain people saying that like they won't listen to his mu- like Kendrick's music anymore because like he's supporting Kodak and I haven't necessarily heard that. I've heard what he was doing with Kendrick is kind of I didn't I didn't really go deep into it but I saw some people saying it was hypocritical I thought people I heard a little bit of that kind of stuff saying that they were not they were going to boycott him but they were just questioning the fact as in why especially when the problem first came on the tweets were coming out on Twitter there was a lot of questioning to as to why and what was the message you were trying to get across okay okay all right so that that's it for the the, the Kendrick Kendrick coverage we got a, we got a lot there it was a lot of a lot of deep diving in into the album um some good conversation we got there uh so i think next we'll we'll get into some more music we'll get into some previous music that we've listened to that came out before the kendrick album all right so next up for music we got the where do you want to start pusha yeah we can do that push us push uh so what do you think push a t it's almost dry um so we waited Daytona's 2018. We waited four years for that one. Um, that was 2018? Yep. The the, the seven-track the, the, album? The Kanye The Kanye run. one? Yep. Scorpion's 2018 as well, because that's when that we got... That was 2018? Yeah, man. Yo, COVID really... Went and really I know. disappeared years from man's lives. Eh? Yeah. So we waited another four... So, we, we, so Pusha T left us with a seven-track classic with Daytona, and that was so... That, that seven-track album was so good that... I was good waiting. No, I was going to say I was good waiting, but I was okay with that until the, uh, this one right here. And um, I must say, even with that out, this album, this this was this was amazing. I don't know if I have it. I don't know if I maybe like it better than Daytona. Um, but I did think it, it, there was something about it that that was just that was just really stood out. I, you know what? I don't I don't, I don't know. I just don't know how I feel about it yet. On obviously Pusha T's discography. But what I will like is that it definitely had more of, um, you know, a pl- like a, 
a theme, you know, the Joker laughing, you know, every time. And it's so funny because even with him in the interview, I can't remember which interview it was. I think it was The Breakfast Club. And they were like, yo, um, he was in the studio with Pharrell. And Pharrell was like, yo, you need to have a thing for this. Because I guess he was giving him a whole bunch of tracks and whatever. And Pharrell was like, listen, bro. He's like, these are great, but these are not. I don't want this on the album. Like, you need to come with a theme. And uh, I guess they had the movie The Joker in the background while they were in the studio. And they was like, I want to do that. And having the Joker laugh and uh, all that throughout the album and it being lyrically great. The features were, were were phenomenal as well. And I thought that just having him in the studio with with, with um, Pharrell and Kanye in different sessions was great. Because I think when you go into a studio, go into an album and just have your two, guys, your two main guys, it, it has you more focused. And um, I like when listening to this, you can tell what productions from which more more times you know what i mean there's a lot of yeah for the majority you're able to tell kind of who produced what exactly like you could tell in the past like that's easily kanye yeah and um for for that i thought that was really good and i'm I'm okay with this for another four years i'm good with it's almost dry for four years if i had to wait another four yeah so i really enjoyed daytona also like the seven tracks was nice to me you know i don't like long albums yep at all so the seven tracks is was was great it honestly it might be a little short like nine to ten is probably like even 12 like you could get like a, like well this a, one was 12 was it not yeah so that was like the probably like i and i feel like maybe that's why i liked it a little bit more maybe because there was a little bit more for me to kind of grab on to because mm-hmm. seven is is quick like it's quick and concise and it's like it's done but daytona was really good i don't i found myself killing this album mm-hmm. like on repeat 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 like more than Daytona, I think. Like, I really enjoy this album. Like, yeah. the production on this album was nuts to me. You could you could just hear the money in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you could hear that there was money in that album. Obviously, with Kanye and Pharrell both yeah. producing the majority of it. But everything, like... Obviously, with Pusha, you know what I mean? Talking that Coke talk, talking that boss talk, that rich money talk. Like... It's like you could, it's like that was like reflected in the productions. Like, it's like you could hear the richness Mm -hmm. in the beats. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't know. I really enjoyed Almost Dry. And, like, I found myself going back to that album, like, a lot. Um, You can, you, I I would probably say you probably, I I don't know where you're like listening to music all the time, but I'm sure you probably did listen to this one probably more at first than Daytona because with Daytona, that was the first album of the the Kanye run where he was dropping an album every week. So like something else came out and then Nas one came out and then, then his came out. With Kid, and then the one with him and Kid Cudi, Cudi Tiana Taylor. Out. So even just that, I could probably see you killing this one more. Yeah, cause I, because especially because there was nothing else around it kind of taking my attention away from it. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're right. But even like taking that out, like it was just like there was something that like I really gravitated to. Like there was just like the certain songs that like stuck out to me on that album like really stuck out to me and like i could go back to those and bump those like anytime like yeah. just so you remember like if you so if you want to go over just standout tracks like just so you remember was one that really stood out to me open um, air was open air was was crazy that was really good brambleton is nuts the production let the smoker shine the coops let the smoker shine the coops instrumental to me is crazy. craziness yep. craziness yeah it's just i don't know i really enjoyed that album i really enjoyed that album Push your teeth, push your teeth, keep doing what you're doing, man. Yeah. If I have to hear you rap Coke for another 20 years, I'm good. That's what I'm That's saying. Like, like, even the, you know what I mean? The, the, I'll, t- I'll take that Coke talk all day. All day. Honestly, he, you're, you're cold. Because he, 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 do, he does it with such, like, <clears throat> profession. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he does it so well. Yeah, like, so well to the point that you don't care that you're getting that same talk on every album. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yep. And that's something you just get, get tired of. Um, Call My Bluff was great. Even, um... Hear Me Clearly, that was on the I Know Nego album before, so that was released, but I didn't know he was actually going to put it on this album as well. That song sounds way better on it this. It sounds nice in the full of the album. I agree with you. Because I remember even, even messaging you that. You did message me that, and even, what's the other single? Neck and Wrist, and what was the other one? Diet Coke. Um, Diet Coke. So Diet Coke, like I really liked as a single. In the context of the album, it it it, it, it doesn't really it doesn't really flow. It that doesn't well. really stick out, and not really flow, but yeah, and I guess in a sense it doesn't really flow as well. But it also gets kind of overshadowed by the other amazing songs on it. Whereas 
you're right. Like something about Hear Me Clearly of those three songs that he released, Neck and Wrist, Diet Coke, Hear Me Clearly. Sounds that that one sounds like for me. some reason that one really does sound like it belongs in, in the album. Hundred percent. I I agree with you because because what songs before that one? Uh, scrape it off with uh, Lil Uzi Vert, Don Toller, which is a great song. Yeah, it is, and for some, it flows really nice into Hear Me Clearly. Yeah, it does. Um, anything else you want to say about this album for? It's no, that's Friday. probably it for this album because obviously this is it's this definitely. Is, I know it's definitely one of your top for the year so far. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like. Yes, I could even say like down the line, like like October comes around, and was, if, we're, if we're recapping on. albums of the year, like this probably would definitely be up there for me. Same. All right, yeah. So that's it. What what what, what do you got next? Ah, and then the we the, the album we got after this was for me. This was my most anticipated album of the year. Like not so not want to say most anticipated, but it was an album that I was definitely really looking forward to because I loved his uh, past album. I I killed his his um. His first album, and that was uh, Jack Harlow's current album. Now, so, come, so we're on to Harleyzy. Yep, uh, come home, the kids miss you. That was released, I think, either a week or two after it's almost dry, and I liked it at first. But listening to it now, it, it is a little bland. <laughs> Can be, it, it, you know what I mean. And, and after seeing the the reviews and other people's take on it, I do like it. There, are, there's some, you know, standout tracks to me on there a lot. There's a, tra- a lot of tracks that I go back to. The goofy flow. There's some songs where you could tr- where you could tell he's trying to show that he's lyrically great. Like on um, um Churchill Downs, you can try to tell that he's trying to get like lyrically nice. And he doesn't. He doesn't sound the worst. He does sound good. But obviously Drake took care of him on there. And um, songs like Young Harleezy are are great. I like songs where um he's getting he gets where he gets emotional like um Little Secret and uh, Side Piece. You know what I mean? I like songs like that from him. But when you take the album as a whole, and this being his his uh, sophomore album, um, I even seen a lot of people saying he was trying to do like a a Drake esque album, which I can see. I don't think I think it might be a little bit of a, re- a little bit of a reach, but I can tell is, what they're saying where he's is trying it to. Though? You think you don't think so? <laughs> is it though? Dude? You think it was a Drake album? I'm gonna finish. I, I, I'm gonna try. Yeah, to I, know, I, know, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. And I like. I didn't even think about that point. I've just been hearing people say that, and I was kind of like. Honestly, say I, I see it, but I I'm just like definitely see it, like I see it. <laughs> so like, so like, did you did you like it? I, I'm I gonna did. let you go off before I. Get... <laughs> I did like it. I did like it. I thought it was good. Um, but you're saying it didn't hold up. It, I th- do. I think do I like this one better than his last one? No, that's what they all say. Um, no. Um, let me know when I let, get. Let me yeah, know when yeah. I could get, go. Finish what you have to say. Let, let me know when I could go. I don't see. Any other standout tracks on here other than the ones that he's already promoted, like Nail Tech and First Class, which I don't, I never really liked at the beginning yeah. either. That song's okay, but um, yeah, I don't. The for even the Pharrell song on here, like, because I love Pharrell as a producer, and that song was pretty mid. Um, I got a shot. There's like I'm saying, there's a stretch here where the songs are mid, and that's like it's like movie star. I got a shot. I'm like, could have been a little better. Um, yeah, what'd you think? <laughs> <laughs> So obviously I'm not the biggest like Jack Harlow person, but I could appreciate that he makes like good music. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like he may not be the best rapper or the best lyricist, but he makes like like solid music. Mm-hmm. So that's why I was okay with with giving this a chance. And I see now like the industry was obviously kind of getting behind him and pushing him. So like I I was down I was down to listen to the album. And it's funny because I never even asked you. Like, I got anything. I did. never. And that's the thing. When it came out, I was like, "Do I put this guy on?" Or do I? you didn't. <laughs> but it was I, maybe it was Joe Bun. But Joe Bun was like, "Yo, Jack Harlow's my guy. Yo, mm-hmm. the album's flames." I feel like he was bigging it up. Mm-hmm. Like he really liked it. So I was yeah. like, "Yo, let me give it." Because I know you and you and AJ were talking about it. Yeah, when we were in Mexico, I was even saying there. There was something I said. I think I was like, um, "He might." I was like, "I was like, I don't know where his career is gonna go." But I said a lot of people are looking him, looking at him as that guy to really. Be the next guy, not lyrically, not being the top three like J. Cole, Kendrick, and Drake, but Just, be that next guy to have the hits, like that guy yes. being like... Yeah, and that's what I saw also. And when I listened to the album, I messaged you like right after and I was like, honestly, it was kind of mid. And I'm not surprised here that too, but I think off my first or second listen, I'm like, oh, this is pretty good. But when you have an extra week to really take it in and you dissect what he's really going on, there's a lot of cheesy bars on here, but that's who Jack Carlo is. And that's who he is. And I'm and, okay with that. 
Like even that's, the, even, that's even, what I was hearing. Like like what I've been hearing. Like some someone else that I was listening to said it, and I was just like, yeah, that's kind of true. It was just like he was saying. Like I guess he was expecting him to come a little harder lyrically, even though like you're saying, he's not the biggest lyrical person, mm-hmm. but. Because I guess this person was a Jack, is a Jack Harlow fan. He was expecting him to step it up a bit, mm-hmm. but he was like, "Yo, honestly, he's like this album was kind of Doctor Zeus's, Doctor Seuss's." <laughs> yeah, I can see that. You know what I mean? Like it yeah, was, it know. was, it was a lot of like cat hat, yeah, bad rad, yeah. T- you know what I mean? Like simple, simple bars, simple and bars, simple and rhyme. that's what I t- and that's and that's the thing. It's like if you like his music like that, if you like the, him so much as a, as a, as an artist, you're going to accept that. Yeah. And, and, and as I was saying, I like him as an artist like that, where I can accept it. Even just like what it, it's so funny. There's some songs even where I go, even on first class where he's like the pineapple juice, give her sweet semen. I'm like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like what? Um, there's a couple, there's a lot, there's a lot more that I really can't even think of at the top of the head, but, um, okay album i'm definitely yeah. gonna go back to it um there's gonna there's standout songs in here that i that i like that you know like a blade of grass i love the song with justin timberlake parent trap is great um and you know the singles that he had nail tech was great that that was a great if he didn't make that a single and just let it come on the album that would have been awesome as well um but yeah jack harlow keep doing your thing keep making your music you, you know what i mean you did the sky's the limit for you in in the rap game and you, you clearly have a lot of uh go-aheads from the from the older heads in the rap game and no, you're definitely you're definitely on the come up. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, it definitely wasn't for me, for the long term. Like for for like a one time listen, like it wasn't the, the worst. Yeah. Production wise, it was great. You but could... I would definitely not go back. Me personally, um, maybe on the third album, <laughs> maybe on the next one, yeah. it does better. <laughs> What'd you think of um, Churchill Downs? Because okay, obviously it leaked, and I sent it to you guys, so you've heard it well before the album came yeah. out. Um, it was alright. Yeah. To me, it was even right. it's so funny because even though it got leaked, he went. He said he uh, on the Breakfast Club that he even went back and added some more, uh, added like another piece to his verse to make it the same time as Drake. So it's kind of like them going back and forth. Yeah, and still kind of the same kind of thing. Obviously, the final version sounds better because he added a little bit more bars and you know what I mean. He did he did his thing, but yeah, like you said, it was mid to you. I thought it was pretty good. You know what that song reminds me of? It reminds me of Light Up. Like it's kind of like you have the older head, the, <laughs> the older head, like giving you praise and rap it about. You know what I mean? And then you have yeah, the young I, boy I get, doing yeah, I get what you're saying. So I that's the kind of vibe saying. it gives me, and, I, and that's the main reason why I like the song. Yeah. So next, I guess we'll get into future quickly. Yep. Um. So what do you think? I, I, honestly, I'll go first, and you could probably go unless, because honestly, I don't really have too much to say. Um, you could probably deep dive more into it than me. Obviously, you know, like. Future is is more our generation rapper. Yeah. As much as like young kids may be bumping him, and I know we kind of seem young, but again, like I said, we're getting up there in age, and like we were in like college when Future was coming out. Maybe like you were still in the end of high school. I was in my last year of high school. Yeah, like you know what I mean? When he, when he was coming out, coming out. So like our like really going out times was when Future was dropping. So we know Future. Yeah, we do. You know what I mean? And, but it's just like maybe because again, like I said, like I'm on my old nigga shit. And, like, I'm really selective and it's, like, I really need you to be coming to me with some substance if I'm, like, willing to listen to you for, like, a whole album. Mm-hmm. But, again, you even brought it up last time that you you asked me if I listened to it because you figured that I might try and listen to more music because we're doing this. And, honestly, I tried. I got, like, seven songs get? in. <laughs> you got to the Drake song with him and Drake. <laughs> and, it's, and it honestly started to, like blend together and then i think i jumped because like ice was like t- talking about holy ghost holy ghost so i listened to holy ghost and i was kind of like yeah i was like that's that's like that's good it's all right yeah. you know what i mean like it's future stuff yeah right and then and i think at that point i was like you know what i think i feel like i get the gist of the album and where it's gotta go yeah. and what else would kind of come from the other songs i like um so i kind of i kind of was just like you know what i'm good yeah, I hear you. So that was me. And I'm not dissing Future. And again, like I said, we came from the... When we were starting to go out, really wanting to go out all the time, Future was, was just coming out bubbling. Yep. But it's just like, at this point, it's just like, there's only I guess there's only so much Future that I could really uh, take. Well, the best thing I like about the album is that... that well, I wouldn't say... I'd say I wanna, one of the I things I pa- like... I want to also pause on that. Yeah. What I said, because, you know, Beer Magic might come at me in the comments for the... Nah, you'll be all right. <laughs> 
<laughs> It'll be all right. What I will say about this album that, that I really liked before I even get into the music is the album, the album cover and the album title. So when you get an album cover like that and the title, you obviously know Future's embracing the fact that he's that toxic guy in the rap game that does all the toxic shit. But um, I like that about it. Uh, production wise, it's a future album. It's a future album. You know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get some. Wait for you is one of my favorite songs of the year so far. I love, love that. I even love how um, Thames is not even doesn't even have really a verse. They just have l like a loop of her saying, "I will wait for you." That that was great. The production's great. Drake's verse was cool. Um, Future Future's verse was good as well. Even actually, no, I wouldn't say Drake's verse is cool. Drake's verse was actually really, really. One of his more emer emotional verses of the year, and um, I, I thought it was great. I love Chickens. I love uh, Puffin' on Zooties is good. The track with Kanye is okay. Keep it burning. Um, even the other track with Drake, I'm on one, is cool. And, you know what I mean? I think, like you said, like after a few songs, you kind of get the gist of the album where he's going. Do yeah. I have it as one of his better ones? I would say it's just more of his, of a, one, of, one of his better put-together ones. But... Um, like I said, the standout for me was was the the theme of the album and the song "Wait for You." That song is amazing, and it's it should get a lot more love than it's not getting right now. So, it... all right, yeah, I don't I don't have much else to say. So, you want to talk about maybe, and you would know more about this, obviously, if there's any upcoming music that you're inter that you're really looking forward to more, and then maybe you could drop stuff that maybe I might be interested in. Cause you are my music guy. This is my music guy, right? You here. know what's so funny? Usually, I'm I have everything that I'm that I'm waiting for at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. I got Kendrick. I got Drake, um, in September. Uh, got J Cole last year. I'm trying to think. Like I got Future. I got Future. I'm trying to think. Is there any? I don't think there's any other rappers. That I got Jack Harlow. I don't think there's any rappers right now that. If they were to drop an album, I'd be interested because yo, even with the newer rappers, has anyone like said? Has anyone like said they're coming out with anything? Not that I've not that I've not that I've heard of. And you know what the funny thing is, is that a lot of the rap, the newer rappers in the game, a lot of them like to drop content a lot. So it's kind of like, okay, I'm giving you EP right now, and then another five months, okay, here's my album. Another five months, okay, here's yeah. So it's it, there's nothing really that I'm really anticipating. It would have been Kendrick, but I just got that. So yeah. you know what I mean. I'm around, and I got Pusha. I mean, we got. I think we got like, all the guys that we all appreciate. We all, yeah, we, we got they, them they all for the last year. So, yeah, so it might be dry for a little bit on our on on that end. You're saying it might be almost dry. It might. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're good for now. All right, so I guess we'll we'll leave off of music. We had a, that was a lot of music talk. I know that that that's that's definitely gonna be our our bread and butter that we get into. Um, so I guess. Next, we could briefly talk about, I guess, just new stuff. Um, I was, I was gonna, I had movies and TV shows and and that stuff next, but we'll we'll just do new stuff quick. So, yeah, we'll start with we'll start with uh, Kevin Samuels. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what, what if you have anything to say. Um. You know what's you know what's funny with Kevin Samuels? I saw his videos. Um, just before, like, it was something that I saw on the internet. You know what I mean? Never really thought too much of it. And then I saw him on the Joe Biden podcast. And I was like, oh, this guy is good. Yeah. He, he, he's like, for real, for real. And then obviously I gave him a follow after that, seen all his content and, you know, see people who admire him. And then obviously you see people who don't admire him. And, um, when he passed there, it wasn't, it wasn't official until like the next day, like a really yeah. official until the next day. So that night before when we put, we, and you and I literally both sent it at the same time. Do you remember that? When mm -hmm. we sent it and then it was like, oh, right, me right after. Yeah. And I didn't know what to think because it's kind of like, he was just getting to, he was trying to do this for a long time and he just got to the point where he's really, really trying to make a brand for himself and what he was and, you know, and uh, gone, gone way too early. He just gone. started to figure it out. And yeah, like, so obviously I'm not going to get too deep into it, but like, like even Joe Budden said it, like as much as there was a lot of people that hated Kevin Samuels and hated what he had to say, even though he, because he was a little brash and, and harsh and like, blunt, and what, and what and he stood for and he was straight to the point and he never and backed down with it. Yeah. But his overall goal, and he made that kind of clear early was that he wanted to help black families and help the black community and right. that for the black community to be strong it needs strong black families because that's what make up black communities. And that was his overarching goal. And, and like Joe Bun was mentioning, mentioning that like he, 
he might have, even though like obviously close to the end, he would have started, he, he, he feels like he started to deviate from that goal a little bit with like how harsh he might have been being or how blunt he would have been being. He still thought the overall goal of helping black communities was still the same. And like, say what you want, like even if you hated, hated the man, like, like I was seeing comments like being like, oh good, thank God he's gone. Like them kind of comments. I've seen that too. And it's like, it's crazy to me that like people could just be so comfortable with be, just wishing death on people and being and just okay putting it out there on the internet and putting it out there like that like and it's like it's just it's crazy to me because i'm like like you're saying oh like oh god's judging him now because of him how he was acting but it's just like how do you think god's looking at you typing still out, out here stuff, typing out this stuff yeah and then it's like 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 it's crazy because like i just remember getting strep throat as like a 14 year old being like yo this is so painful i wouldn't even wish this on my worst enemies but people are just so comfortable wish, wishing death on people. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, like that guy is that guy had a mother. Mm. That mother lost her son just now. Like he had a daughter. That daughter lost her father. So it's just like for you to be like for you to like actually be okay typing out, yo, thank God he's gone. Yo, God will judge you. You know what I mean? Like yep. like who like who are you? And that's where it's just like And it's clearly people obviously that I don't know, nine times out of ten, I feel like when he's discussing something about people, so discussing stuff about women or people that they don't like, I feel like nine times out of ten, you're that person that he's trying to like talk about. And no, I'm not judging anybody, but that the thing is, is just like with him, I think with him, he's just trying to get to the point and be straight with it and, you know, not be, um, you know, what's the word? Uh, when you're not trying to, you know, be around the bush about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that's one thing I, I definitely appreciate Kevin Samuels for. Thank you for... Um, you know, showing us the way, us men showing us the the way, and uh, trying to save uh, black families as well. Yeah, rest in peace, Kevin rest Samuels. In peace, man. And, and I mean, it's it, death is never a a great thing, especially for the people that are still here and are mourning that loss. Like it's it's never a good thing. So just just give people their space and just. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need to be that mean and that harsh. So, rest in peace, Kevin Samuels. And we'll kind of leave it at there. Leave it at that. All right, next. So, we have the Young Thug Gunner Rico case. I don't really have too much, but that's just crazy to me. It is. And um, honestly, for the... Obviously, we're the we're the older generation for rap. For rap. No, I wouldn't say the older, but we're, up, we're getting older up there. Yeah. For, and being that in that topic, but... Um, I work with a lot of younger kids and who obviously admire Young Thug and Gunna and you know when they heard this like this was like a really big thing to them like this was like you know holy shit like these guys are you know getting arrested and they were even asking like what are Rico charges and I didn't even know what are Rico charges all I know is it's, it's just a, it's just a whole bunch of unorganized sorry a whole bunch of organized um, crimes that you do yeah that the police can gather up on and, and, and get you locked up for it so when they heard that especially I know one kid that I work with he's supposed to, he's at Metro Metro right now and uh, Young Thug was a headliner, so he he paid his money to, to actually just see Young Thug like on the on the second or third day, and he won't even be there right now because obviously he's in jail. But this is a big thing for the for the younger rap community, and um, with the Rico charges for, for, for this, it, it it's it's an eighty eight page indictment that named nearly thirty people and contained evidence going as far back as twenty thirteen. So this is a whole bunch of shit that they've been wrapping up from for the years and just trying to climb up and get a whole bunch of questioning on them for. Now, do I feel, are they guilty? Pro probably. Do I think they're going to do jail time? Probably. But Actually, I don't, but I don't think they're going to do a lot. Okay. I mean, I mean, this is, like I said, like this is a lot of, and then it's funny because the last case I've seen in the rap community for, um, for this kind of case for this Rico charge was 6ix9ine. So with that, obviously you saw how that went. He was going to be locked up for 25, 20 to 25 years unless he didn't snitch and he did that. I don't think it's the case for this situation. I don't think they need to tell or I don't think they need to release information to give them a shorter sentence because even if they get a sentence, I don't think it's going to be that long. And um, it sucks because for the hip hop community, these guys are great. Like Young, I don't, I don't really like too much from Young Thug. I liked his last album that he did, um, So Much Fun. I thought that was great. That was one of my favorite albums of 2019. And Gunna is great. He just released his uh, uh, DS4 album, which I, I enjoyed. I didn't think it was that great. but And he was on good. the shop. Yeah, he was on that too. So he, that's what I'm saying. He's he's a big uh, fashionist 
in the um, in the rap community as well. Like he's up there with the ASAP Rockies and the Kanye West for like the fashion for the fashion yeah. um, rappers and stuff like that. So overall, I would just say you know um, I don't think it's gonna be something that's gonna be prolonged. I do think it will get dealt with shortly, and I don't see these guys doing a lot of time for these cases. And I hope they don't snitch on. on <laughs> Because <laughs> that would suck. Yeah, they would lose a yeah. lot. They they seen how what's going on with six nine. I they I think they know for their career it's better not to snitch if they if they're getting a a, a shorter sentence. Yeah. So I guess next we could get into movies, TV shows, and stuff. Um. So I guess we'll we'll just cover some of the big superhero movies that we have went to go see together. Yeah. Um, and with some of our other boys that we usually go with, uh, we usually always go see these movies like opening weekend. You know what I mean? Like we're there. We always we love these movies. We've been going opening weekend since literally like we were like fourteen. Yeah. Fifteen. You know what I mean? Going to see like Iron Man one and yeah. and all that shit together. So we've been going to see these movies together for for a long time, my friend. So we'll start off with Spider Man because that's the first one that came out in this list that we're covering what do you think amazing that was definitely my favorite superhero movie of 2021 um i thought everybody was great the acting was definitely more enhanced as it was in the the, the last two spider-man movies out of the trilogy um obviously the surprise in the movie was was probably the biggest that to me is probably one of the bigger surprises in marvel in um mcu history for me the like the the, the, the spider the, spider the, men's yeah to me, like, I mean, yeah. I don't see a moment bigger than that and get it. I've never, we were in the theater, man. The whole audience was literally like, yeah! Like when, Andrew talking, Garf, when Andrew Garfield yeah, came and, in. Yeah, and it told me, like, I've never seen that in a movie theater for for any for any surprise like that. And um, to me personally, like, I, I enjoyed that moment because it's like, I've never experienced that in, in the movies at all. It's something so crazy like that. Yeah. And it was amazing to see. And they all did a good job too. It's not like... They did. They did. They each had, like, their, their own piece to add to the movie. Yeah, and it was... Um, they, they definitely either didn't lose a step and they didn't take away from the movie and they and they definitely didn't add in too much either like they their parts in it were, were perfect and yeah they, and and they were and they were great like they fit in the movie so perfectly yeah so i, I really enjoyed it as well it, it probably wasn't like i, I honestly i feel like i might have liked shang chi really more than spider-man really i really enjoyed shang yeah i, I re- that was one of the best like origin stories in marvel to me I really did enjoy Spider Man though the the second act to me like the middle part when he's like in the apartment trying to fix them and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. That part to me kind of s- slacks because I I watched it again not too long ago like probably like early April, and the second act kind of falters a little bit, but the third act is like so good and not just because of like all the action but just because of like the like the acting like when. Like after like um, what's his name? William Defoe kind of like turns. Yeah. Merck's Aunt May. Yeah. Like that point, like all of them, like great acting. Like from that point, like the movie really kind of turned up, and like even just from an acting perspective, like when he goes to the rooftop, and he's like crying. Oh yeah, and, yep. And then uh, MJ comes, and Daya comes, and and his friend come. Like that's where it's just like it really turns up. Not only just not only just like on an action level, but just from like an acting level too, and just like a like a. Uh, just a general overall movie perspective. Like I feel like from that third act, it really starts to improve. Uh, but yeah, no, I really did enjoy it. I enjoyed seeing obviously Dr. Oct- our Dr. Octopus from Spider-Man two come back. Cause like, Spider-Man two is still one of the best yep. comic book movies like of all time. You know what I mean? Like the fight scene on the train. Yep. Spider-Man two is still one of the best. So good seeing him. Good seeing William Defoe. I would say, I will say, the only thing that I thought that was different because everybody who came back in the movie from the past Spider-Man movies were were great. I think the only one that they really had to tweak and adjust was Jamie Foxx's character. He was not that but was I, not the same. No, it wasn't. But I like his new. I so do I. So do I. Look at, look at this new new. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, he's like I like the energy here. Yeah, yeah you know so, what I mean? like, so it's kind of it's nice. I I did like that tweak also. He, I did like his. I did like him in this version. Also. Who else? The, oh, yeah, the, 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 the lizard, lizard was just the, like the, whatever. The Sandman was kind of weird. Sandman was kind of like a, a throwaway one, also. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, with regards to the Spider Man, like obviously Tom Holland did his thing, but like this movie made me get more of an appreciation for Andrew Garfield and just 
just how good of an actor he is. He is. And just what he was trying to do with his Spider-Man. Like, I grow more of an appreciation for his Spider-Man. And even just... His Spider-Man, to me, is still one of the best ones with regards to how his how he fights. Yeah. Because I don't know if you remember in the first Spider-Man how, like, he was fighting Lizard in the high school. Yeah. And he was, like, crawling all over him like a real yeah. spider. Like, he, I like the way that that Spider-Man fights. And his suit is still probably one of the best, best suits. Ones, yeah. And then, obviously, Toby's the GOAT. Yeah. You know what I mean? Toby's just classic. And they each had, like, their amazing parts, especially in that end fight scene. But yeah, overall, I I did enjoy it. I, I don't know if I would put it in my top ten, just because there's so many Marvel movies now. Yeah, you know what I mean. If you no, think about it, it's like there's like Black Panther, Infinity War, Endgame, First Avengers, Iron Man, Guardians. Like there's so many but, now at this point that it's like it's hard. So I'd have to think about it. Like if anything, it might squeeze into that top ten. It might but be ten it, or nine. Yeah, but like if anything, like I still think like I, of of these three Spider Men's, I probably st- Spider Man movies, I probably like Far From Home or Homecoming. Homecoming, maybe with Vulture. Oh, really? Maybe the most of the three of them, okay. and then maybe this one being second, uh, the Mysterio one, maybe third. But I I do love all of them, and they're all really good. But that's that's probably like my order, and it's I'm interested to see how they'll incorporate him back into the mcu with now everyone not knowing like his identity mm-hmm. um so i'm interested in that and i don't know if you have any final thoughts on the movie no i thought it was awesome i, I definitely wish uh, i even got to see it a second time after right before um one of the, our last lockdown that we've had here in canada but um no I, I, it was definitely one of my favorite movies of last year and it's definitely something i want to watch again down the line for sure all right so we'll move on to the batman um, again, we saw that together. Have you seen it a second time yet or no? I haven't. Have so, you? No, but I remember it fully. I, I do too. Um, what do you, th- what, what do you think? And, and did you have, what was it different than what you first thought when you walked out? Cause my thought now is different than when I first walked out. That's good. Um, for me, I, I still really like the, the, te- the, the, the detective aspect of the movie. It made me feel like I was playing like, you know, it's kind of felt like you were playing, um, Arkham Asylum or Arkham City. You know what I mean? There's always, like, in those games, you always see him, like, looking for clues to find where, you know, yeah. where it's going. I, the only thing I didn't like about the detective mode, it felt a little too uh, too prolonged. Like, I feel like they were looking for the rat for, like, an hour and a half of the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? The part, you, know what I mean? you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. they were looking for that piece for a long time. But I still do like the part. Even when he has Catwoman as a disguise and she has, like, the thing in her eye, in her eye I think it was. And, um... He has her going through the club and talking to certain people and guiding her where to do and yeah. ask questions. Awesome. That that's was, like that's like bat. That's Batman. That is Batman too. That's like, Batman esque. Yeah. Yes, I love that. Yeah, I agree. Um, the fighting, the combat of uh, Batman was okay. It was it was you know what I mean? I it, it's definitely Ben Affleck to me is still the is the, the best one. I was yeah, I, yeah. combat com, just just basing on the combat wise. Mm-hmm. Like, do you remember that scene in? Batman vs Superman. Yeah, when he comes to the floor, yeah, yeah like, then, that's like the Arkham game. Yep, yeah, for sure. So and I agree with you on the combat. <laughs> Take the most good. The movie. Um, I thought the interaction between him and the Riddler, like I, th- I wanted more of the Riddler. Like I wanted more. Like you know that part where they're in, where he walks and sees him in the, in jail, and they interact with each other for like that five to ten, like for five yeah. minutes. I want more of that because I feel like it didn't do the Riddler's character justice throughout the whole movie. Obviously. Um, Catwoman was great. Uh, Colin Farrell as the Penguin was great. The race, the highway scene with them race, uh, them particular was great. Um, the my only cons- issue with the movie was the actor playing of Robert Patterson. I didn't think he was bad. I didn't think he was bad. There is, uh, like I said, like we spoke after the movie. And you even said that there was there were reports saying that he wasn't really. I don't know, bought like fully bought in yeah. to it. And in that, and there's some parts of the movie where it showed. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's and that's what I kind of first said, but obviously, like, like I said, because I'm I'm acting now and I'm trying to like obviously get into this, like obviously like I know how hard it it, it can be to like stay committed, especially for that long. Um, I've now obviously I've never experienced anything like committing to a movie for that long, but yeah, like I I I feel like I was able to see certain times too, but again, that was when I first came out, and like I was saying, like as I've had time to sit with the movie, my opinion has kind of changed. I, I actually really do enjoy his performance and his take on Batman. He, yeah, like I, I, I think he did a good job. 
with um just like emoting that like hurt damaged batman like he did a really yeah. good job showing that mm-hmm. as opposed to just like a- angry which he is but it was more like the i'm hurt alone damaged which which he re- he really did portray that one of my biggest problems when i came out was i felt like the movie had like a pacing issue and it was a little long it was a long movie N- not th- sorry the, the 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 scenes that they were tra- like that yeah. they were yeah it was like it felt like it was it was kind of stretched out a little bit and it took me a while to i guess understand what what the director Matt Reeves was trying to do with that and he was really just trying to use like silence as like a tool to kind of show and explain certain things and i didn't really get that till after yeah and again shout out to Matt Reeves like this movie is probably is, is like a, a directing master class. You know what I mean? Like for people that like are like trying to be directors, like that is like a movie that you would watch just to just from like a director's point of view to see how he did the cinematography, just the world building, just like like all of that like was amazing. And then obviously fun fact, I think like I mentioned this mentioned this to you before, but did you know he was he did Cloverfield? You did mention that, but I forgot about. Do you that. remember? Remember? When, remember? Remember? You were all into Cloverfield. Yo, yeah. what monsters? That like that's yeah. so crazy that he did that. I'm just like I could definitely see it. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so the pacing was was a bother at first, but then as like I thought about the movie, I was like, you know what? He was using it in a certain way, and like I'm I'm really okay with. Or I actually like how he used it, and yeah, just the more that I sat with it, the more I was just like, this movie is really good. Yeah, it was really good, and even and um, I really liked it. And even the you see, like you were talking about Robert Pattinson, even the like he was showing, saying like he's hurt and like he's um you know trying to heal and do all that kind of stuff, right? Even the part where you know where he goes to the um, to the club the first time, right? It, not as Batman, but as um actual Bruce Wayne, and he's there and he's shivering and he's tired, and you can see that he's trying to like you know get used to the to, to the nocturnal lifestyle. So it seems like this is him. Would you say it's him kind of early in the Batman in his Batman? Oh no, career? it is. It's it really is right. Is. So that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it's well early. So like, you can see, like, like, even when it's daytime, he's like always like looks tired and you know trying to like get used to like nocturnal life. And he was even I think there's a scene even where he was talking to um, Alfred about that, like him adjusting and yeah, and that like he has to like he has to he has to journal in order to keep track of the days mm-hmm. because they're starting to like blend together and stuff. And like yeah, like yeah, like Matt Reeves kind of. Including those aspects into the character was like a really, really good touch, and that's why I'm saying just like the the details that like I feel like Matt Reeves paid attention to were like crazy. You know what I mean? Like just like he was really paying attention to everything. So like I, I just like the more that I sat with that movie, the more I was just like kind of understanding what he was trying to put down, and I was like, you know what, this is is a really good movie. Yeah, it was good. I honestly truly enjoyed it. Worth the wait. It was, and I'm excited to 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 watch it again when when I'm able to do that. So the final movie we'll talk about, which we saw recently, uh, was Doctor Strange and the good. Multiverse uh, of Madness. Yep, ready to talk about that one. What do you What do you think? Ah, uh, for for so for the title for the title of it, Multiverse of Madness. I don't think the movie does the title justice. It wasn't that mod. You're saying, <laughs> yo, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, yo, multiverse of mass. I'm thinking they're jumping into everything. Like, you know what I mean? I'm thinking, you know what I mean? But I have to obviously, you know, temper expectations and, and be like, this is still a Doctor Strange movie at the end of the day. And obviously it shows Doctor Strange as he's developing his character as well through, through, um, through the hopeful trilogy of what he has with Doctor Strange. Yeah. So with that, so with that, I did, I think I said that I did like the movie. I did like the, the little surprises they did have throughout the movie. I thought that was great. Um, the fighting, like the action in it, was good. The like the fighting scene at the beginning, with the, um, that, with, the, the with the octopus thing. Yeah, like that was that was that was cool. Um, other than that, I did like um, Wanda as the as the villain. I, I liked that. I liked it. Yeah, and I liked what she stood for as the villain. Obviously, they all like in most movies they always try to lead it back to something that has to do with their family, which is obviously the 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 easy way out. I want to say the easy way out, but that's the obviously the main reason why people do crazy things, right? It's because they want to protect something or it's something yeah. they, they desire. And um it was good to see her as a villain and obviously it got to enhance it shows her her powers enhanced as it does to um the show WandaVision, right? Would you not say? Yeah. yeah. So you know what I mean? So even with that I thought that was that was really cool. 
what was the you, you, you've watched WandaVision? I have. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, so you're right with that. And so I don't want to say it's mid. It wasn't mid. But maybe again, like you said, like I thought it would have been a little modder. Yeah. And and I'm not saying that I'm sitting here expecting that they would have thrown in like like Chris Evans Fantastic uh Johnny Johnny Storm from Fantastic Four and Nicholas Cage's Punisher. Yeah. Or or Nicholas Cage's sorry, Ghost Rider. Or Spider Man pops out again. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I w I wasn't expecting them to go oh Ben Affleck's Daredevil. Yeah, no. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't expecting like all of that, but yeah, like I guess I was expecting just uh, just a little bit more modness with the multiverse of madness, and it was like, which is good because most movies need to be able to be self-contained, so that if someone random just came in and watched the movie without having watched any of the Marvel movies, they'd still be able to pick it up. Which I I, I would say it did a good job with that, but because it's part of the Marvel universe and part of the Marvel movies, it's like you serve a bigger purpose than just being a self-contained movie. So I think that's where I was kind of, I guess, let down a little bit. And again, that's me with my expectations, which I, you know I mean? Could have tempered a little bit. Um, but yeah, like Dr. Strange, like Benedict Cumberpatch was good. Uh, Benedict Wong was good. Elizabeth Olsen as, as Wanda, like was, as, good. was really good. Her, them making her the villain uh, was really good. And I was saying this the day when we left, I was like, I was surprised that they made her the villain. Mm-hmm. Not just because like she, cause she's not like not powerful. Cause she's obviously the most powerful, mm-hmm. but it was more just like, I thought I didn't think Marvel and Disney would go with that route of making one of the few female superheroes on the Avengers side, the villain. a villain. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was surprised that they did that, but the movie overall to me, like I really, I really liked it again. I don't, I'd have to go through my list, but I don't think, I don't think it cracked the top 10. I, I would, don't know. I would take Spider-Man over Dr. Strange multiverse of madness. Uh, Fun fact. Um, would you say Dr. Strange is better than the movies that aren't his? Like in infinite, like, that, like he, I feel like, you know what I'm, you know what yes, I'm trying to say? Yes. And no, because he's only been in infinity war. Endgame, Spider Man, Spider Man, and then his movies, right? Yeah, I I like Doctor Strange one. Doctor Strange one to me is like a really good movie. Yeah. Doctor Strange one is better than Doctor Strange two. Yep, right. So that's where it's just like I'm I'm with you, but I'm also not because Doctor Strange one is his movie and that's really good. Mm. But then on top of that, yeah, like, him and in Infinity War was great, and amazing. Yeah, and he's not really in it in Endgame that even much. in him and and him and um. In No Way Home was great too. There's yeah. even that one f- scene with him and um, Spider Man, like in, in like the yeah. mirror dimension. Yeah, yeah, like that was that was really good. And bringing up Daredevil, I uh, going back to No Way Home. That Daredevil um, scene. cameo, that was probably that cameo probably got me more than the actual Spider Man because ones. he's actually on. He's not. He's. Not, I don't think I've ever seen him on the big screen in that character. Right. No, so, and like just knowing that that and like what that kind of meant was that they were actually kind of merging the dark gritty marvel stuff with the disney stuff was like a big thing so like that's why like that really caught me off guard and like i that cameo to me was probably the biggest one that i kind of and even when i coming out of the movie after the third act like i was like that charlie cox cameo though was was crazy thing was the thing yeah um so yeah, the I guess that's it for Doctor Strange. We both enjoyed it. We didn't both love it, but we both enjoyed it. Uh, I guess next we could just talk about upcoming movies and TV shows. Um, I still need to finish Winning Time. You started it, no? I did start it. What do you think so far? Really good so far. Really entertaining. Uh, yeah, I like it. I gotta I gotta get more into it because I've I've just been hearing that the more it goes along, the better it gets. Yep. And a lot of people that I listen to have been saying it's probably some of the best. TV mm-hmm. out there right now, so I definitely have to get into it. Got to get on uh, Bel Air next. Bel Air is something that's 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 I, I that, have oh, to man, get that into. is great. I I'm not even finished. It. I'm on I think episode five. It's great, great. So that's that's something that's on on the list. So those are those are two big big TV shows that I have to get into. Obviously, this upcoming weekend from when we're recording this, uh, Top Gun's coming out that I'm looking forward to, and show wise the new Obi Wan. Kenobi show yep. for Star Wars is coming out Friday. Uh, they're dropping two episodes, so I'm looking forward to that. And another big movie that's coming out somewhat soon. <clears throat> uh, I, I mentioned Top Gun. Soon after is Jurassic 
Jurassic World, World Domain. Dom- yeah. Is it, Dom- is it Domain Dominion or Dominion? Or Dominion whatever. <laughs> um, uh, Thor. We're probably going to see that. That looks really good. And then Thor soon after that, which again looks good. They haven't given too much. haven't really seen Gore the God Butcher, Christian Bale's character, yep. in the trailer yet, which I think they'll probably drop the next trailer and, and reveal him in that. But those are probably the, the, the big movies upcoming. Black Panthers later on in the year. They're, are they done, they're done filming that? That's done? I think so. I could be wrong because I heard they had a lot of postpones. Of course. They had to postpone a lot of, of stuff. passing, right? Yeah. That and like I know uh, the that sister. Might have, that might have uh, to do, uh, I think once he passed. Letitia Wright. Yeah. And played his sister. Got She's like a concussion a... or something. Like she got like injured or something. On so they, set or off? Yeah, or something. So they had to take a break. So I can't remember exactly if they're still on schedule with Black Panther 2, but I think that's I feel like coming they're close because that thing with. Um, coming out this year. I think that thing with Ryan Coogler just happened recently as he was taking. Remember that thing that happened with him at the bank or whatever? I don't know if yes. Saying. So yeah. that, I think that's. They were close to being done at that point. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I think I think that might be it for the movie and TV show talk. All right, and the last topic we got today is basketball. Uh, so let's just start off with because obviously when we're recording this, the finals is probably starting like in like a week and a half. Yeah, I was right? gonna say so. Yep, there's usually a four day break between. Yeah, like, they don't mean to give their players to rest. They have to do the media stuff and do all that. So I think it's like a four or five day break. So we'll go over the bracket and we'll just go over some of the stuff, some of the, I guess, teams that we thought would have won. And we'll kind of just go from there. Uh, I so wanna, we'll start in, you want to start in the East or the West? Start in the East because okay. I'm surprised that um, Brooklyn got swept first round by Boston. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, that was kind of crazy to me still. I'm not going to lie. Uh but after like game two, I think, and I saw just like how physical they were and just how they couldn't get off like anything. Yeah. I was like, okay, like this might be a long series for them. Like I did think that KD would kind of find his group. At least two. And kind of like thing, but they really kind of stifled him and kind of held him held him in check. Yeah. They did. And I don't think, I can't remember too much, but I don't think his scoring was that crazy in that series. It wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't right? No, okay. not at all. That's why I was like. It, I remember one game it ended, I was like 50, I was like 18 or 16. I was yeah. like, what? Um, the thing, and that's the thing. Like even them going Boston going into the next round and then beating like the reigning, like the reigning defending champions is crazy. Like you take out the arguably the best. Yeah, player I'm not. The- I'm not really surprised at that. I was kind of cheering for Giannis because remember I told you that I had a take. I don't remember your take. But so I'm, I had a take, and it was before. It was during. It was like early in the Boston Milwaukee series, yeah. and I was like watching him, and I was just like kind of taking in just like how dominant he was and at the time i was like you know what if this guy beats boston that just swept brooklyn yeah goes to the next round beats miami goes to the finals and beats phoenix or golden state i'm like i think we might have to be talking about like top 15 player all time Giannis? Kind of talks. Yeah. You know what I mean? With back-to-back MVPs, defensive player of the years. Oh, yeah. yeah. If he would have won this year, it would have been Def- back-to-back titles with no Middleton. Does he have... He has two defensive player of the years, right? Yeah. That is and like crazy. And, him, like, him just being as dominant... And, like, if he would have did it with no Middleton, mm-hmm. it probably would have been one of the hardest championships... Championships runs that I would have seen in the last maybe, like decade in a long time because like going back even the last few years right last year obviously it was it was still kind of it was still kind of even the year before that was the, 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 the bubble it was the bubble so that was the lakers yeah and then obviously the year before that was the Raptors. toronto yeah and yeah like i just i just look at if if giannis got through brooklyn and then miami and then golden state i i would have just looked at that path the fact that he was back to back champion, you know, what I mean, back to back champion, and what with you went, no Middleton, and the run you went through, and, and who you had to be to get to where you're at. Yeah, I would have, I would have had to, we would have had to maybe start looking at him like a little differently. Hundred um, percent. Going on, did you like the Milwaukee Chicago? I knew that was done. Yeah. What did you think of the Toronto Philly series? Did you think Raptors were actually going to come back from three one and win? <sighs> no. No, I had I had because no, that's that's really tough. Sorry, from three zero from three zero from three zero. It was three zero. Yes, and and no, and I, I I figured we would get game four. Yeah, 
I thought it would be done five when we went back to Philly, but somehow we pulled that off and I'm not going to lie. I started to feel a little bit of hope. Like if we actually win. I was like, if we can get this and get game six off, I'm like, they're going to be mad tight, yeah, mad tight. And I was like, I, I feel like they wouldn't perform in that game seven, but obviously they ended up taking yeah. game six and they feel he needed to. And just even, just to. even the confidence from Nick Nurse, even him being like, well, you know what I mean? We're down 3-0. Someone's got to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that that was kind of like, okay, like you're, he's right. Like some team's going to do it eventually. Yeah. And I thought we would have been the first one, but I guess not. But, you know, the future's bright. The future's definitely bright. Yeah, for sure. Um, so Scotty that, Barnes, before we move off Toronto, because obviously we're from Toronto. Scotty Barnes was was a was a was a was a good good pick. I like his game. I like yeah, he is still. good. He is good, and that's what I'm saying. Like he's once he has another full off season with the Raptors, he'd be even better. Yeah. Um. So that obviously leads us to the Eastern Conference. Um. Currently, Miami leading two one. I didn't get to watch the game yesterday. Didn't get to really see it. I was working, but um, Miami was Miami was pretty dominant throughout. Boston pulled it closer. Before you continue, in the end. before you continue, both teams were healthy, right? Everyone was playing. Kyle Lowry came back. Marcus Smart was there. Played. Al Horford was there. I know yeah, Jimmy got hurt Jimmy midway. Jimmy got hurt midway through, which was... I saw Tatum fall. I thought Tatum grabbing his, his, his knee at one point. It was his shoulder. Yeah, and then his shoulder later on, but he ended up coming back. Oh, he ended up playing. Yeah, okay, I, I don't think injuries had to do with anything, especially especially because Miami won without Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Like, I would say that for the most part, the teams were kind of... And even Miami was somewhat at like a disadvantage even with no Jimmy. Exactly. Because, like, Old Depot, like, didn't go off. And Old Depot's been kind of being, like, that filler if Jimmy isn't there or Jimmy's not going yeah. off. But he didn't really go he off. He looks good, me. though, from what I saw. He does look good. And Bam looks solid, too. So from what I did see. Um, that that series is going to be is gonna be, is gonna be interesting. Yep. Game, um, that's game gonna four go tomorrow. Wrong. Yeah, game four tomorrow. And with regards to the Golden State, obviously, from when we're recording this, we literally just found out that... Actually, so what was what was the round before this? Before um, Golden State-Dallas? Uh, yeah, who did it was Boston, Milwaukee, right? And we just talked about that. And yeah. then you talked about from the West, Miami. Oh, Miami, Philly. We didn't talk about really Miami, Philly. That I that was the other series that we. Missed. I knew Miami. I knew Miami was winning that because yeah, same. Philly was banged up. Harden's not. Harden's underproducing. Yeah, no. Yeah, so you're right. We don't have to spend too much time on that. So we went over the Eastern Conference Finals with Boston and Miami right now. That's gonna go seven, I think. That that's gonna be a really, a really dragged out series, and it's just crazy because Miami, like basically dominated Boston in Boston for the most part, and then Game Two Boston dominated Miami in Miami. So it's interesting. Clearly, both teams aren't scared to like play away. Yeah. So it's definitely gonna go seven. I think uh, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, so I guess we could move over to the West. You want to start at uh, Memphis and Minnesota? We'll start first round. Honestly, I knew that was going to be a tough series I did. for I, Memphis. I, 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 because I was shocked. They're both young teams. They're both young, athletic, fast. Like It's like the matchup. It was a bad matchup for Memphis. That's why I had a feeling it was going to be tough just because they have like the personnel to match Memphis and how they play. They do. So I knew that was going to be tough. Um, I But I still had I still had Memphis winning. I mean, like, I would have... No, like, the same. Like, same. Yeah? Um, going on to Golden State, Memphis. No, we'll see. Let's stick in the first. Oh, sorry, sorry, still. my bad. Golden State, Denver. Yeah, and had a new, no, new Golden State was gonna win that again. You y'all know how you 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 and Curtis know how I feel about about Jokic. Mm-hmm. I, obviously, last year nothing. I don't think he should have got back to back MVPs. Like that's crazy to me. I'm not gonna lie, because there's agree. only a handful of people that have back to back MVPs, and it's just like he's one of them. Yeah. That that's crazy. It is. Um, what else? There was Phoenix, New Orleans. Yep. New, then, Orleans, New Orleans gave them a tough fight, but I, I knew Phoenix would, would, would come through on that one. And then Dallas, Utah. And then, yeah, I had a feeling Dallas, Utah is just, Rudy Gobert gets cooked. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy Gobert gets cooked. But how are you so. a two-time defensive player of the year getting cooked? Like, it's I don't crazy. know, yo, that's, cra- that's crazy that's to crazy. me, too. That's crazy to me, too. Uh, so what, what was the round after that? Um, then there was in the in the semifinals it was Golden State Memphis. Golden State Memphis, which was a good series. It was a good series, but I think we both know that the day Golden State was winning that. Yeah. I would have loved to see like the John Moran and his young upcoming team actually take out Golden State. That would have been great for 
conversation. But I think obviously in the back of our minds, we know Golden State's way too experienced and they're still technically healthy. And, I, and I'm torn because like, you know my hate for Golden State, especially because mm -hmm. I was an OKC fan. They dismantled my team. You know what I mean? They came back 3-1. So you know my hate for Golden State and just generally like obviously like I know Steph Curry's disgusting. Like there's been times I'm watching Golden State and he, he be hitting shots. I'm like, you're a sicko. Mm -hmm. But like I just know how his influence on kids growing up playing basketball these days. So I there's like a hate deep down that I have for 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 Golden State. So I'm torn because it's like there's part of me that's like I don't know if the, the young teams are quite ready. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready for y'all young teams to come up and, and start bubbling yet. Yep. But then I'm also just like I'm not a Golden State man. So in that series, I was like, I don't even know who to kind of like back in a sense. So honestly, I'm kind of just like a, a neutral observer at this point, just trying to watch good basketball, you know? Um, so for Phoenix, Dallas, that one was crazy to me because not only did Dallas win in seven, but they like beat him by damn near 30. I think, and, yeah, was, and at like, one point it was a 50 piece. And like, it, I, yeah, like that's, I, I don't know how that slipped my mind, but it's just one, it was crazy that they were up 2 0. Phoenix, right? Yeah. And then kind of faltered. But then to have game seven like that, like getting like almost 50 burgered at one point. Yeah. And like, Luca came out hot. Like it was like, just like. That was so like. I, like I've never, in the words of Skip Bayless, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Like actually though, because like that, I, I was like, I don't even know what I'm watching. Like what's happening? That that was that was crazy. Yeah. So there's, you think DeAndre Ayton staying? Well, there apparently there's some so there's some riffs saying that Dallas is not trying to pay him what he wants. Like he wants the max. Phoenix, you mean? Sorry, did I say Dallas? Sorry. Yeah. Um, there there apparently the Phoenix is saying that they're been not wanting to pay him the amount. Been. So it's interesting. I'm I'm interested to see what they're gonna do with Would him. You pay the mask? Year. Is that the max? The max? It's hard because. He isn't that dominant, but he could be really good if he if he focused. But at the same time, it's like, do you take the chance? It, it, you know, but it's just like it's. There's not too many centers that you would say are better than him, right? You know what I mean. So it's just like if you're gonna go with if you're gonna you're obviously gonna need a center on your team. Everybody does. So it's like, he's not the worst to have. You know what I mean? Like, like would I take him over like a Ken Birch? Yeah facts you know what i mean like that's 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 easy so it's like depending on your team yeah like he would be a really a really good piece i think right but i think where the problem is because he was drafted the same year as luca and they're seeing what he's producing and, and they like, and he just got cooked by them and it's like it's not even close with their you know what i mean with how close they are in like level mm -hmm. it's just like that's where i think he's getting killed but i i, I don't know if he's worth maybe max but I'll pay yeah, i mean he like, deserves like a, he definitely like a deserves like a local payday like a 55 Definitely deserves a little pay. Fifty-five, I'll give him that. So, and then yes, as we're recording this, Golden State just won today, and they're up three zero on Dallas, which is I, 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 again, like I had a feeling that Golden State would win. I did not think that it would be three zero right now, and I honestly, I was like, I knew Dallas would be kind of scary, and there was a deep, 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 deep down that I was like, can Dallas beat them? Same, but. I guess not, right? And I guess, like they said, there's levels to this. But it's like, it's crazy that they are kind of, I guess, getting dismantled in a way. But they were able to, like, do what they did to Phoenix. Yeah. Right? And I guess, like, I think the biggest thing with that is I think teams have trouble with Golden State's player movement. And just how players are constantly moving when they don't have the ball off back screens. or setting back screens for a guy completely opposite of where the ball is. Right, so that constant player movement has teams thrown off, and it's hard to just keep track of everything for a defense for, as a defense for that long. Yeah. So I feel like that's one of the biggest things why like they're having trouble, and why with Phoenix they were able to kind of handle it a little more. Um, but yeah, no, that was crazy. Like them them beating Phoenix, and it looks like they're about to about to get swept. Um, yeah, obviously it looking like it's going to be a sweep. Obviously, there is a possibility that Dallas. Obviously, they're at home, Dallas in the next game, so there's a yeah. possibility they take that one game. But and it's looking uh, like it's looking like Golden State is in the gonna be is gonna be locked in the finals again for Steph Curry's. I believe it will be his fifth appearance yeah. in the finals. So who's on the opposite side? It would be um, Miami and Boston. No, I'm asking who do you think is gonna who do you think is gonna it's gonna be Miami or Boston? <sighs> Golden State versus who in the finals? 
I want to say Boston, man. They're good. They're good. And they have a lot. And I think that I, – I, I wouldn't say I – I think Boston's going to make it. I don't think they're going to win the series, but I feel like if Boston were the team to be, face Golden State in the finals, they would be able to, I think, be on pace, not on pace, but be able to maybe contain the way they move the ball and keep up with them with the amount of wing defenders that they have with Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum's See, okay they, defender. And you're right, because Boston has more pieces and they have more yeah. versatile defenders. And they have length. But and- the thing is, like... And I think Miami showed because I was interested. This game three of the Miami Boston series, I was interested to see because because they got slapped in game two. I was interested to see how they would come back in game three, mm-hmm. whether they got beat or if they actually came out. And they, when when I went to the score app and I saw that they were up like twenty six at one point in the third, I was like, okay, like these guys like are focused. They know how to bounce back. They're resilient and they're disciplined because of Pat Riley, Eric Spolstra. And when I think about Boston, they're still young. Mm-hmm. They are. You know what I mean? Like their but main, they do have their main though. piece. They do with Al Horford and Marcus Smart. Like Marcus Smart's only twenty eight, yeah. but he's been there for since the beginning of his career. So you're right. They have vets, but their main pieces are young. Are Jaylen young. Whereas Brown, Golden State's main pieces are the vets: Steph, Clay, Draymond. Draymond. They're the main. They're the, the main pieces are the vets. Even Andre too. Even so on. that's where. And again, Boston's coaching is good. Like Ime Adoka is is showing to be like a really good coach, but Eric Spolstra is, is that guy, and he's been that guy for a long time. And it just he, it, it, you know, what I mean, like he he is an amazing coach, like a next level coach, and like he just oozes that culture and that Miami vibe off of him, and it, you can just tell with like that team. You know what I mean? I hate to be bigging up Miami with you know what I mean our 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 friend being a Miami fan, so I hate to be bigging up Miami. But I feel like one Boston Golden State would cheese me because Trey and Scott. Oh, that would, that would be crazy. For they, them. they would be yo. They yeah. would that would be so funny. Like I'd have to message those guys. Yeah. <clears throat> but I think how Dallas is getting exposed right now with regards to the player movement. I feel like that might happen to not to the extent that it's happening to Dallas because, like you said, Boston has better defenders. And they're and more then, disciplined, and they're just a better defense overall. And they got more length. But I still think like that youth would come in with certain times where it's like you might catch like Tatum like watching somewhere else, and oh, Steph Curry's in for a back cut, or Clay Thompson's behind him for a back cut. Whereas like I feel like Miami might be more disciplined with their defensive coverages, mm-hmm. and with regards to not letting them do that kind of tricky stuff that they do. That's where I would give it to Miami to kind of slow Golden State down more than Boston because I could see that youth kind of coming into Boston and those mistakes piling up more than they would pile up with Miami. <clears throat> so I don't know. Something, something, I don't know. Like, so you're going Boston Golden State? I got that. That's my finals. Yeah. I would love to see it. Honestly, if Miami didn't win game three, I probably would have said Golden State, Boston. But because they did and with no Jimmy, mm-hmm. I think it, I think Miami's gonna be the team. And honestly, like I've been saying, like I and I was I was late on them, but there was a point like coming closer to the end of the season that I really started to take note of Miami, and I was like, I was like, these guys are actually good. Like they're they're really good. Like they're a good team. They are a good team. Um, it'd be great to see Jimmy in the finals again. Obviously, the the bubble didn't really do like obviously they they lost in six, but I don't think the bubble really did him justice as you know getting the big stage getting the fans there yeah. and all that stuff right so it'd be good if he gets another chance i'd love to see kyle lowry in the finals again yeah so, but I, it, it'd be great to see you know i wish it was in a raptors jersey but yeah, yeah. but i do think the more entertaining finals would probably be golden state be boston. boston okay and that's another reason why i wanted to say too because i think that would be very that would probably well. be more entertaining entertaining with like the shot making steph shooting jason tating shooting step back you know what i mean like i think that would be more more a uh, more entertaining series. Yeah, more energe- you have the you have the energy too from Draymond and Marcus Smart and that yes. kind of thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, That'd so awesome. like that I think that would be the more entertaining game, but I think if I were to be like if you were to put money on it, like I feel like Miami, Miami might make it through. And if I were to give a choice of which of those two teams could possibly have more of a chance to beat Golden State, I would probably pick Miami. I was Me, say, okay. Because of the dis- because of them being more disciplined. Yeah, because of the coaching. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. I just like I said, I think the more entertaining one would be with Boston. Yeah. But either or, it would be awesome to see. It would be. It would be. 
So the finals is soon. Finals is soon. Is there any other uh, ball talks you want to wrap up with? That's like our playoff coverage. Final starts, obviously, like soon. So like hopefully, obviously, when we record our next podcast, we'll be talking about the finals and yep. that matchup. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's any. Is there anything else that you, you want to say? Any like other side news about the Raptors or any draft stuff or any just any other side stuff about the NBA that you want to? Nothing Talk at the moment. Nothing at the moment. No, I just want to say I'm glad that you know the NBA is kind of back to where it is after all the whole COVID stuff. You know, the the protocols haven't been too as crazy as they were. I remember at the beginning of the season there was a lot of like players being out because of COVID protocols and stuff yeah. like that, and it's yeah. not too crazy like it's that not, anymore. And that's kind of yeah. So it's it's kind of good to have like the NBA back at full effect right on its actual schedule. You know what I mean? We're not watching the finals in August or like in October, like how we were in the bubble or whatever, right? Yeah. And um. I'm just glad that the NBA is back in a great place and the future is obviously bright with the NBA and its players. Yeah, me too. Me too. All right, man. I think that's it for the for the podcast number one. This is, I think this might be the first episode, the end of the first episode, sorry, of the Brandon Karaya podcast which, with my co-host, Damar Lewis. Uh, this was good. This was good. How, how, how'd you feel? Feel good. You know, it's definitely going to take some uh, getting used to. but um, For sure. For sure. I liked it so far. It was fun. It was. It was discussing all this stuff. You know, I love discussing all this stuff, and especially with my my boys. I especially love discussing this stuff with you guys. So being able to kind of do this more often is. I'm I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, you know, what I mean, let's let's not make this longer than it than it needs to be. You know, thanks. I, I want to thank everyone for for watching for who does watch it or if you're listening. Um, again, the video portion of this podcast will be on YouTube. I uh, look up the Brandon Cry Network and it will be under there as the Brandon Cry podcast. But we will also be uploading the audio version or the audio portion uh, to wherever you can find podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that good stuff. So check us out on both of those, you know, if you want if you want to watch the video, if you want to see our beautiful faces, go to YouTube, the Brandon Cry Network, and if you just need it in an earbud and you're doing some chores around the house and you want to listen to what we have to say about this stuff, go listen to them on your DSPs. That would be greatly appreciated. And yeah, I'm looking to looking forward to growing this, this community with my co-host and talking about more of these topics. It is your boy, Brandon Karaya, AKA the master of none, AKA EF Hutton of entertainment. I'm just giving myself some nicknames that I've given myself in my Cry Chronicle videos and got my co-host, Damar Lewis. Any last words, my friend? No, I just want to say thank you for listening, guys. We appreciate it from me and Brandon. Thanks for listening and watching.